Live from Dickerson Stadium in Institute, West Virginia, it's UNCP Braves football as the number 18 UNC Pembroke Braves hit the road to take on the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. Good afternoon, Brave Nation. I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you for joining us today on the Braves Broadcast Network as the 1-7 Yellow Jackets will look to defend home turf against the scorching hot 7-1 UNC Pembroke Braves. Should be a good one here today, and I'm glad you're here to join us. The Braves come in off a win against Catawba for homecoming in Pembroke last week, 41-31. The Braves on a three-game winning streak after a heartbreaking loss to Tuskegee, their lone setback of the year. The opening regional rankings came out this past week. The Braves are right in the thick of the playoff race, looking to get back to the playoffs after a two-year drought. This UNCP team should feel pretty confident as well taking on West Virginia State, a team the Braves handled in Pembroke a year ago, 45-21. Quick recap of that game for you. That was the first ever game between the two teams. This would be the second game between UNCP and West Virginia State. 45-21 uh, Braves win in Pembroke. The Braves had five sacks, held West Virginia State to just 87 rushing yards, picked off two passes by West Virginia State. And the star player of that game for the Braves was wide receiver B.J. Bunk. Guess what else is new, right? Three catches, or three touchdown catches of 40 or more yards. John Rich had a fourth 40 or more yard touchdown pass. So you got to be thinking the Yellow Jackets are aware of the Braves' ability to pass the ball deep against them. Bunn finished that game, by the way, with eight catches, 198 yards, and three touchdowns. So if the Yellow Jackets can't stop the pass today, I don't expect anything other than a repeat performance for UNC Pembroke against West Virginia State. West Virginia State, 1-7. and seven. This is their first and only non-conference game. They play in the Mountain East Conference, so they're 1-7 and seven in conference. Last year they were 5-6 and six overall, 5-5 five and five in conference. So a little bit of a step backwards for them this year. It's a very, very young team. The only senior who starts on their offense is right guard Dalton Shannon. Everybody else is a, uh, a non-senior. Then three starting seniors on the defense. One linebacker, Mitchell Rowell, and then two defensive linemen, Jay Terry and Brandon Garcia. The Braves have plenty of experience, and that starts with that tandem. Patrick O'Brien, the redshirt junior quarterback, and his roommate, B.J. Bunn, redshirt senior wide receiver, who's looking to rewrite the record books in Pembroke. It's the 10th season of football for UNCP, and this is looking like one of the stronger seasons the Braves have ever had. 7-1 and one right now, looking to wrap up the season strong with a pair of games against Mountain East Conference competition. The Braves will play here at West Virginia State today. They'll be off next week and then wrap up their regular season at home against Concord, which actually plays West Virginia State next week. So certainly a game the Braves will be looking at very intently. But they're also focused here today on this game right now. 60 minutes and a chance to improve to 8-1, and one, pick up a fourth straight win, and uh, very importantly for the Braves, pick up a win on the road. They were not very good away from Pembroke last year. They're great in Pembroke. They won all five road or home games last year. They're 4-0 and at Grace P. Johnson Stadium this year. Last year, the problem, though, was getting on the road, getting away from Pembroke. Head coach Shane Richardson talked a lot about maturity, talked about the ability to, you know, stay in a hotel and continue to be in your routine and your rhythm. Uh, the one road win the Braves had last year was at Fayetteville State, so it's not a game where the Braves really had to travel all that much. This year, it's a different story. They've been all over the place. They've won at Winston-Salem State. They've won at Shaw. Took a tough loss at Tuskegee, but led after three quarters. Here's a chance now for UNCP in their last regular season road game of the year. Also, they spoiled Lenore Ryan's homecoming a couple weeks ago. That was an awesome game for the Braves. Here's a, And <laughs> it's not technically a road game for UNCP, but they weren't playing in Pembroke. Uh, they, they did win against Kentucky Wesleyan in a game that the Braves had to move to Scotland High School for uh, in the wake of that hurricane that Shane Richardson thought of as a road game, and it certainly felt like a road game because it wasn't at home in the Braves' home team. So the Braves are certainly better at playing away from home this year. Here's one more chance to do that. And staying focused on a team that, at least on paper, shouldn't be a huge threat to the Braves. That's what I talked to UNCP football coach Shane Richardson about before the game started. Go ahead and take a listen to UNCP football coach Shane Richardson just a couple minutes ago, uh, the pregame interview. 
Here with UNCP head football coach Shane Richardson getting ready for today's game at West Virginia State. Coach, a nice road trip up to West Virginia, taking on the Yellow Jackets. What was kind of the message as you got ready for this game? Yeah, uh, really it's it's the focus is all about ourselves and making sure that we're doing everything that we are capable of doing. And uh, we talked about it earlier in the week where uh, we're not in this just to win a game each week. We want to play our best. We want to make sure that our process is the right way. Uh, we're trying to build a culture of winners. And it's a lot different doing than being. And we want to be winners all the time and everything that we're doing and excelling on the field today. And uh, we just want to make sure that we come out and exemplify that in everything that we perform. Last year, your team beat the Yellow Jackets in Pembroke. B.J. Bunn had a big game in that game with three receiving touchdowns. Is he going to be a focal point of the offense today? Well, I think B.J. is typically uh, somebody that we can rely on as a playmaker, uh, somebody that can come up with big plays. And uh, the great thing about that is if he plays his best, then everybody else should be able to raise their level of play also. And so uh, obviously we're going to make sure that we're going to whoever is a kind of the hot hand and whoever is open we're going to throw the ball to. Uh, whatever's working, we're going to do. Uh, but, you know, I anticipate that West Virginia State's going to be ready and uh, really respect their program. And uh, we've got to make sure that we're on top of our game in all facets today. All right, Coach, thanks for joining us. Good luck today. Thanks, Cam. So that was UNCP head football coach Shane Richardson talking about what the Braves need to do here today against a 1-7 West Virginia State team. They started off with splitting their first two games, now on a six-game skid. The Braves, meanwhile, have won three in a row. They're 7-1, and one, the 18th-ranked team in the nation in Division II football as the captains come out to midfield. While we do the coin toss, let's get a quick message here from our sponsors. Adidas is the official apparel sponsor for all 17 of UNC Pembroke's varsity athletic teams. Adidas provides some of the most innovative products in the shoe and apparel industry and is one of the most recognizable brands worldwide. UNCP thanks Adidas for all of their support and offering the best for Braves athletes. And the captains for the Braves, Elijah Williams, Mark Quinn Hill, BJ Bunn, and Patrick O'Brien. And it looks like the Braves will be going from right to left across the field to start the game. Or are they just taking those sides now as they get ready to toss the coin? Braves will be wearing all white except the black helmets, white pants, white jerseys with the black lettering and numbers. West Virginia State, all black, black helmets, black jerseys, black pants with gold letters and numbers. And slight white trim on the shoulders. It's a gorgeous day in Institute, West Virginia. Barely a cloud in the sky, 76 degrees at kickoff. West Virginia State has won the toss. They elect to defer, and the Braves will begin with the football here this afternoon. Also, Braves fans, ever wondered why our sponsor, Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC, has such a long name? One reason is the tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great-looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top-of-the-line Cadillacs, so why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube, and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac GMC, located next to Lumberton High School. Yellow Jackets getting ready to take the field. The Braves have made their way out of the visitor locker room. The visitor locker room are under the home side bleachers, whereas the Yellow Jackets get their own facility, a brand new Gregory V. Monroe Athletic Complex located along the end zone on the left end zone of the field from my point of view up in the press box at Dickerson Stadium. Dickerson Stadium seats about 5,000 people. It's about seven hours away from UNCP and here in Institute, West Virginia, pretty close to the borders of both Ohio and Kentucky. So certainly an, an experience for a lot of these players who haven't been up this way. UNCP does have a history of playing teams in this conference as UNCP did get a trip from West Virginia State last year. This Mountain East Conference and uh, 
for the Braves, I'm sure they didn't know how the scheduling was going to work out when they scheduled these games, but Concord and West Virginia State, the two teams the Braves will play out of this conference right now, two of the bottom teams in the league, Concord at 2-6, and six, West Virginia State 1-7. and seven. The top teams in this league are really good, and the nationally ranked Fairmont State and Shepard both unbeaten, and Notre Dame in Ohio is 7-1 and one overall, 6-1 and one in conference. So certainly been some stratification here in the Mountain East Conference, and the Braves taking on two of the, at least record-wise, weaker teams in the league, but a lot of that has to do with matchups, and it's certainly the kind of thing where the Braves can't get too confident, too complacent, as they trot out onto the field wearing those white jerseys with white pants. UNCP will be going from right to left across the field. Back deep to return for the Braves, B.J. Bunn, Trey Chandler. 15 minutes on that first quarter game clock. We are just getting ready to go. Braves football, their final road game of the regular season. And it begins right about now. A little bit more about West Virginia State. It was founded in 1891, historically a black college, but after uh, desegregation in 1954, it's really gone to be uh, more white than black students, about 20% black population in the 60s, down to about 10 to 15% nowadays. About 3,000 students, so smaller than UNC Pembroke. And this is the second time these schools have ever squared off on the gridiron. First time was a year ago, and the Braves came away with a 45-21 victory, looking to get another one here today and improve to 8-1 and one on the season. The 1-7 and seven Yellow Jackets, the number 18 UNCP Braves, kick off right now. Kicking off for the Yellow Jackets, it's Anthony Herrera. He puts the ball up in the air, and we are underway. Trey Chandler tracks this one down in the end zone about four yards deep. He'll take a knee. And the Braves offense will come out to the 25-yard line where they get started, led by redshirt junior quarterback Patrick O'Brien, who has a QB efficiency rating of 145 on the season. He's thrown for 2,107 yards, 18 touchdowns to eight interceptions. He'll be standing behind an offensive line from left to right. Lawrence Keyes, Jaden Funderburk, Chris Hassard, Demarcus Whitehurst, and Daniel Butler with tight end Stedman Rush. His receiving core is John Allen Quay 3 and the main target, DJ Bunn, and the running back flanking O'Brien in the shotgun formation is Rontonio Stanley. Snap to O'Brien, fires to the right side, complete to Bunn, and he'll be wrapped up pretty quickly, gains of about three or four yards. Tackle there by Trent Williamson, the linebacker. And that gives us the opportunity to introduce the starting defense for the Yellow Jackets. They play a 3-4 defense. Their defensive lineman Jay Terry, Devon Bollinger, and Brandon Garcia. The four linebackers, Dwight Blankenship, Mitchell Rowell, Dennis Gardeck, Trent Williamson, and the four defensive backs, Kevin Coffey and Kyle Alexander, are the corners with Kaveh Conte and Allende Warren at the safety spots. Braves bunch up along the line of scrimmage on second down and eight, second play of the game. They give it to Stanley off left side. Stanley picking his way forward across the 30 to about the 31. Brings up a third down and four situation for UNCP on the game's opening drive. Actually spot him forward, call it third and three as the West Virginia State defense will look to get off the field quickly in their first possession of the day. DJ Bunn comes alone to the near side, two receivers to the right. Check that, three receivers to the right. No tight ends, one running back. O'Brien comes in the shotgun formation, just the three down line, and they'll look to try to blitz from the outside from, looks like, Williamson. Play clock at seven, snap to O'Brien. Just a four-man rush, he has time. Stands tall in the pocket, throws complete over the middle. Enough for a first down, taken down across the 40 to the 43-yard line. First down, UNCP, the catch by John Allen, redshirt sophomore from Asheville, North Carolina. And the Braves move the sticks on third down. First and 10, UNCP, ball spotted on the left hash as the Braves approach midfield. In order to move the chains again, they will need to advance the ball into Yellow Jacket territory. Fullback Dylan Davis is in this formation. He's standing right to O'Brien's right, and the deep back is Stanley. One receiver to the right, one to the left. First and ten for UNCP. Snap to O'Brien. He has time. Now he's hit as he throws. Complete to three. Short of the first down. Marker gain of about seven. It brings up second down for UNCP. Two minutes in the books. No score yet. And the Braves moving the ball on the game's opening possession. Looks like a delayed blitz there by West Virginia State. And Dennis Gardeck came in from one of those linebacker spots. 
Got a pretty clean shot at O'Brien, but he pops right back up and is ready to go. Call it second and four for the Braves offense. Two receivers left, one to the right. O'Brien in the pistol again. The fullback Davis is to the left side. Now a safety coming in to blitz. Goes to the wrong side. Stanley pushes forward. He's right at midfield. Gain of about one or two for the Braves, and now it's third down and two yards to go. 12.20 to go in the first quarter. No score yet in this one. The Braves converted one third down already on this drive, and the clock has never really stopped other than to move the chains. O'Brien has completed his passes, and the Braves have also kept the ball moving forward in the running game. One receiver to the left, and DJ Bunn on the far side of this formation. A couple tight ends here on third down and short. Let's see if the Braves try to jam it up the middle. They give it to Stanley. Stanley surges forward. He has just enough for a first down. They needed two. He gave them three and a half, and it's first and ten for UNCP. Ball spotted on the West Virginia State 45-yard line as the Braves drive from right to left across the field at Dickerson Stadium. Three comes out. Bunn and Chandler will be standing on the left side of this formation. The Braves continue to go big, leaving Dylan Davis in this formation. Shotgun now, and Stanley is the running back to the right side of O'Brien. Now motion Chandler. They shovel it to him, try to cut across the right side. Now comes back to the middle of the field, gets a block from O'Brien, and now Bunn is out in front to the 30. Chandler to the 25, 20. Stutter steps, he's still going, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Braves. Trey Chandler takes it 46 yards for a touchdown. 6-0 Braves. Technically, it's a 46, 45-yard run, but Chandler started going from the left side, ran to the far sideline, then cut all the way back, and great blocking by everybody from UNCB. Even the quarterback, O'Brien, getting involved, and DJ Bunn just showing wow, how he can get upfield and block as well. And now Matt Davis on to tack on the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. That's over the weight room complex. And with 11.07 to go, or excuse me, 11.09 to go in the first quarter, UNCP 7, West Virginia State 0 on the Braves Broadcast Network. fans season tickets for the 2016-17 home basketball season are on sale now and premium chairback seats for the peach belt conference's most electric environment can be purchased for as little as 70 dollars this season's package includes 14 men's games and 13 women's games and can be purchased by calling 910-521-6361 or visiting uncpbraves.com slash tickets matt davis kicking off for the braves after the black and gold took the opening possession down the field 75 yards in a hair under four minutes to take a 7-0 lead here at West Virginia State. Davis's kickoff will be fielded five yards deep in the end zone and taken for a knee. Touchback on the kickoff, and the Yellow Jackets offense comes out onto the field, led by their quarterback, junior Matt Kinnick. He stands behind an offensive line from left to right. Chase Henderson, Nick Dreixler, Devon Bradshaw, Dalton Shannon, and Alex James. His receivers include tight end Brady Cox, wide receivers Quinton Gray, Tyrell Henderson, A.J. Barrett, and his running back, Juwan Etheridge. First and ten for the Yellow Jackets. Their first time holding the ball here in this ballgame. 11.09 to go first quarter. UNCP 7-0. That's a scoring play for the Braves on their opening drive. A 45-yard touchdown pass 
from Patrick O'Brien to Trey Chandler on that little sweet play the Braves love to run. They keep it on the ground to Etheridge. He is stood up and gains about three yards, just trying to surge up the middle. And it looked like the starting defensive lineman made that stop. Tyler Hinton, probably the one to finish off that tackle. Starting D-line for the Braves, Eris Brooks, Ed Hopper, Marquin Hill, and Tyler Hinton. And the linebackers, Garrett Barnett, he's the Braves' leading tackler, joined by Elijah Williams and Cameron Williams. And in the secondary, Sean Everett, Khalil Hollis, Tyler Threat, and Matthew Thomas Quick. Shotgun snap to Kinnick. And before he has time to get this throw off, there's a flag on the plate thrown from the far sideline. And it's a false start on the Yellow Jackets. So penalties have been a problem for West Virginia State this year. They tend to really uh, hurt themselves, shoot themselves in the foot. And the Braves have been better uh, after some up and down games. They gave about 150 yards in penalties to Kentucky Wesleyan. But last week against Catawba, much cleaner. The Braves average about 64 yards per game. Throwing on second down, complete. And across the 35, that should be enough for a first down. Quinton Gray stayed on his feet there. Throws a little bit behind him. And that will move the chains. So Kinnick's first throw is completed to his top target, Quinton Gray, a junior from Stafford, Virginia. Gray comes in with 53 catches, 645 yards, and three touchdowns. So they say he got the first down just by the nose of the football. They were a little late to move the chains there. First and 10 for West Virginia State. We've played five minutes in the first quarter. The Braves have a 7 to nothing lead. Shotgun formation again for Kinnick. Three receivers on the left side, just one on the right side, and the Braves all coming up to the line of scrimmage. They keep it on the ground, a big hole, and a run up the near sideline, going all the way to the house. Deonta Brown goes untouched, 65 yards, touchdown, Yellow Jackets. Boy, the Braves saw a lot of that last week against Catawba, just big holes in the running game. They pick up right where they left off defensively by giving up a long running touchdown. So that drive for West Virginia State goes three plays, 75 yards. Deontay Brown, the junior from Reynoldsburg, Ohio, has his second touchdown of the season. Now on to attempt the extra point to tie the game, Anthony Herrera. Goes down, the kick is up, and it is good. And with 9.32 to go, hope you're ready for a shootout, ladies and gentlemen. It's 7-7 after West Virginia State scores. We'll be right back. Race fans, don't miss out on your chance to receive rewards for attending UNCP home athletic events during the 2016-17 season. Visit the App Store on your smartphone and download hashtag Brave Nation, UNCP's new fan engagement app. The app can be found on the Apple Store or on Google Play. Search hashtag Brave Nation. 9.32 left in the first quarter. Each team's had one possession. Each team has scored seven points. The Braves scoring play, a 45-yard pass to Trey Chandler. The Yellow Jackets scoring play, a 65-yard run by Deontay Brown. And now Herrera will kick off again. Chandler chasing it down at the one-yard line, and he will try to return from the far side. Cuts back up the middle. He is wrapped up from behind and thrown down at the 11-yard line. A big tackle there in space by Tavon Littleton. Redshirt freshman DB makes the play on special teams, and the Braves will have a long way to go on this possession as Patrick O'Brien leads his team back out there. Two receivers will come out to the left. Looks like one to the right. 
different running back in this formation. It's not Rontonio Stanley on this drive. It will be Cliff Jones to start the Braves' second drive. This is something UNCP likes to do offensively. Offensive coordinator Johnny Cox likes to basically give each running back a possession. O'Brien will throw on his first play of the second drive. It's caught at the 15-yard line, pushed back to the line of scrimmage, but forward progress will get the Braves all the way up to, it looks like, the 18-yard line on the play. Looked like that was B.J. Bunn just making the catch in traffic for UNCP. So second down and four for the Braves. Ball spotted. On the right hash as the Braves drive from right to left across the field. Braves wearing all white, West Virginia State in all black. Snap to O'Brien, they keep it on the ground this time. Jones, Jones lowers the shoulder. He stood up and met and then thrown backwards. I'm not sure he got any forward yardage that time. They'll give him about a yard and there's a Braves player down on the turf. It looks like 76, Chris Hassard, who will be in need of some medical attention right now. Fans, remember to tune in every Saturday morning at 9.30 on WFXB Fox TV for the UNCP Sports Black and Gold Report presented by Pepsi. It's a show all about UNC Pembroke Athletics, which will bring you interviews with coaches, highlights, and special features from around the UNCP Athletic Department. Tune in Saturdays at 9.30 on WFXB Fox TV. And if you're not in the coverage area, we'll try to have that show posted for you on Monday or Tuesday morning on the UNCP Braves YouTube channel. Injured player on the field will step aside for a moment. 8.38 to go in the first quarter. It's Yellow Jacket 7, Braves 7 on the Braves Radio Network. Chris Hassard needs to be helped off the field as the Braves get ready to go on third down and three. It's spotted on UNCP's own 20-yard line after a good special teams play on the kickoff. Pin the Braves deep in their own territory. Everybody up near the line of scrimmage now. Motion man is three. He goes from left to right across the formation. O'Brien drops back to throw, swings it out to the right side. It's tipped down, incomplete, and that will bring up fourth down. Braves opting to throw on third down and three giving it to Cliff Jones, who was in that formation. And now the Yellow Jackets defense looks pretty fired up. They'll come off the field, and Matt Davis will come on to punt for UNCP. Back deep to return for the Yellow Jackets, number 83, A.J. Barrett. Snap to Davis, gets his leg into this punt, spirals it, but it will fall short of the 50-yard line. He was punting from about the 10. He has his hands up on his helmet right now. He's not happy with the way that punt went off his foot. We'll have to see where they spot this. It's going to be inside the 40 to about the 39-yard line. Great starting field position for West Virginia State on their second possession. 7-7 is the score. 8-0-9 to play in the first quarter. As the Braves defense got gashed for a 65-yard run by Deontay Brown. Brown will be the tailback in this formation. He'll line up with quarterback Matt Kinnick. The Yellow Jackets have not been a prolific rushing team, just 86 yards per game this season. They got 65 of them on one carry. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. They will keep it with the, oh, it's a reverse, and now a pass, trying to find some space to get rid of the ball and just chucking it out of bounds. Had to try to figure out who had the ball there. 
That was a tricky play. And it was Akeel Washington. Excuse me, 19. That's Jamal Brown, who uh, was the one who ultimately kept that football. A little tough to figure out some of these numbers on the West Virginia State players. They're gold numbers on a black jersey, but it's a very thick numeral, and it also fades from black at the bottom to gold up at the top. So it can be a little hard to see sometimes. A lot of these guys have long dreadlocks that cover the numbers. Kinnick calling for the ball on second and ten. He will give it up the middle. This time it's Brown, and he's stood up in net for a gain of just about a yard. So third down and nine coming up for the West Virginia State offense. They're inside UNCP territory, ball spot at the 38-yard line. But they have a long way to go. Grace will take some linebackers off the field now and bring on a couple extra DBs and safeties. Two receivers right, two to the left on this third down and nine play for West Virginia State. Seven and a half minutes to go, first quarter, tied 7-7. Snap to Kinnick, Braves bring pressure. They throw it to the right side, complete. Ball pops out at the end of that play. They'll say it was ultimately incomplete as the wide receiver never had possession. Trying to hook up there with number 85, tight end Brady Cox. And the Braves almost just grabbed that right out of his hands. Couldn't do so, so it falls to the natural grass field incomplete. Fourth and nine, and the offense will stay on the field for West Virginia State in no man's land. With the line of scrimmage, the UNCP 37-yard line. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Kinnick will roll to his right, throws on the run. And dropped at the 30-yard line. Incomplete. Turnover on downs. The throw was behind his man. He was open. Looked like A.J. Barrett. And he couldn't hold on. The Braves did a nice job of getting pressure on Kinnick as he was trying to throw that ball. Couldn't put it right on a spot. And the UNCP offense will take over at their own 37-yard line. O'Brien takes his offense back out onto the field. Fullback Dylan Davis stands to his right. And the running back looks like Rontonio Stanley. Two receivers right, one to the left in the pistol formation. Play fake, O'Brien looking deep. Throws over the middle. Bunn makes a leaping catch near midfield. He's pushed back but had enough for a first down based on where he caught that ball. But one play, an 11-yard pass. Braves getting back to business here on offense. Seven minutes to go, first quarter, UNCP 7, West Virginia State 7. As UNCP had one very good-looking drive, one three and out, West Virginia State. They had a scoring drive, but it came on a 65-yard run, so hard to call it a good-looking scoring drive. They couldn't string together multiple first downs. Two receivers right, one to the left, Bunn alone at the bottom of this formation. They give it to Stanley, tries to get off left tackle. He's ushered out of bounds near midfield. Maybe a gain of one on the play. Just a lot of east-west running. And coaches will tell you, running back, you want to see him going north-south. So a gain of a, a yard for Rontonio Stanley. Second down and nine. Ball spotted on the left hash. UNCP 49-yard line. In order to move the chains, they need to get to the West Virginia State 42. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. DJ Bunn again. The lone wide receiver on the left side of this formation. Shotgun is O'Brien with Rontonio Stanley to his left. Play clock down to four. Gets the snap. Oh, it goes over his head. Picked up off the ground by O'Brien. He's rolling to the right, running for his life. He just needs to get rid of it. That's exactly what he does. So an incomplete pass by Patrick O'Brien. Great hands by O'Brien to pick that one up off the field. A bouncing ball that came right back up to him. He's able to just chuck it out of bounds. Incomplete pass, and the Braves averted disaster there. It does bring up a third down and nine, but that could have been much, much worse for UNCP. So there's a new center in the game after Chris Hazard was injured last drive. Looks like Jared Johnson is the one making these snaps to O'Brien. Third down and nine with under six minutes to go in the first quarter, tied at seven apiece. Two receivers left, two to the right, O'Brien in the shotgun again, and West Virginia State playing off the line a, bit, a little bit. They're playing pass. Snap to O'Brien, flag comes in, throws it deep, looking for Bunn. Oh, excuse me, that's three, he makes the catch, and it's a touchdown, Braves. Ten yards after the catch, we'll have to see what the flag is, but I believe it's going to be encroachment on the defense, and the Braves will decline, it'll be a touchdown. Bunn and Threet were both running from the slot up the middle of the field, and Threet was the one who broke on the ball and scored. 
Just a perfect throw right in stride. Quay three, touchdown Braves. And when you pick up the flag, touchdown Braves, it's 13 to seven. Matt Davis on to attempt the extra point. Bun to hold, the kick is up and it is good. And with 5.48 to go in the first quarter, get ready for more scoring. UNCP 14, West Virginia State seven, and we'll be right back. Forty-eight left in the first quarter. UNCP 14, West Virginia State 7. Scoring play on that drive, a 51-yard pass from Patrick O'Brien to Quay Threat. As Davis kicks off, it's off to the right side, and that will bounce down at the one-yard line and out of bounds. Flag on the play, the illegal kickoff out of bounds. Now, that was very close to being touched there by the return man. As the referee comes over, I think they're going to talk about this for just a second. That was A.J. Barrett, and he uh, waited until it was out of bounds until he touched it. So the Yellow Jackets will move the ball all the way up to the 35-yard line on the kickoff by Matt Davis that went out of bounds. He's been good on scoring plays. He's hit both of his PATs, but his punting and his kickoffs have left a little to be desired so far in this game. Matt Davis has been fantastic as the main special teams guy for UNCP, averaging about 44 yards per punt. He's hit a 53-yard field goal and missed just three field goals on 22 attempts. But it's good starting field position for the Yellow Jackets. Shotgun formation for Kinnick, and before this play can get started, there's a flag, and it's a false start on the offense. The second penalty already, the second false start penalty on the Yellow Jackets offense. Last drive, or last time they had a penalty was their first drive. It didn't really cost them anything as they were ultimately able to move down the field and score on a 65-yard touchdown run by Deontay Brown. Yellow Jackets playing from behind again. It'll be first and 15 with 5.47 left in quarter number one. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation for quarterback Matt Kinnick. Yellow Jackets driving from left to right. Give off left side, a broken tackle. Brown pushes forward. He's across the 50 to the 45, and he goes out of bounds. A big run on first down, gain of 30 on the run by Brown, and the Braves have had all kinds of problems controlling him in the early going. I actually say he stepped out of bounds near midfield, so take about five or six yards off of the end of that run. It's still a gain of 21 on the carry by Deonta Brown. First down, Yellow Jackets. They give it to him again off left side. This time the Braves are all over him he'll be piled on top of by Garrett Barnett for a gain of just a yard. 5.07 to go now in the first quarter. UNCP 14, West Virginia State 7. Yellow Jackets outgaining the Braves on the ground 90 to 15. The Braves offense has come through the air. They have 131 yards passing compared to 12 for the home team. Three receivers right, one to the left. Again, a shotgun snap, Kinnick. This time he gives it off left side. Brown breaks a tackle pushing forward. He's out of bounds near the 40. This should be enough to move the chains again for West Virginia State. And they will signal first down Yellow Jackets. Check that. Third down and short. So call it third down and one. And now the Braves defense with an opportunity to get off the field. Looking to the sidelines, West Virginia State still has plenty of time. 15 seconds on the play clock. Two receivers right, two to the left. So they're keeping no tight ends in this formation, still getting great blocking. Play clock at seven. Kinnick gets the snap, 
Give it to Brown, who's got another gaping hole to the left side. He has enough for a first down. He's taken down the 33-yard line. Huge push on the left side of that offensive line. Chase Henderson and Nick Dreixler deserve a lot of credit here for the Yellow Jackets. And UNCP head coach Shane Richardson is screaming from the visitor sideline on the far side of this field. Shane Richardson in his third season as the head man of UNCP's football program for a record of 15-13. and 13. And His team on a nice little three-game winning streak. Kinnick will drop back to throw now. Fires to the right side. Thomas Quick makes a diving attempt, can't hang on at the one-yard line. It falls incomplete. A very poorly thrown ball there by Kinnick. As he was looking to get a guy along the near sidelines, instead it was about seven yards closer to the middle of the field. No black jersey anywhere near that. Fortunately for the Yellow Jackets, Matt Thomas Quick was also had to really break off of his route of guarding the receiver to try to make a play on that ball. Second down and 10. This time a runoff left side and absolutely nothing there for Jawan Etheridge. He'll be tackled for a loss of two on the play. And the celebration there from Khalil Vance, who's fired up. 3.30 to go, first quarter. UNCP 14, West Virginia State 7. And it'll be third down and long for the Yellow Jackets offense. Ball spotted on the Braves 36-yard line. Quarterback Kinnick is in the shotgun, two receivers right. One to the left. Braves looking to blitz. Kinnick has to step up in the pocket, and he is taken down, sacked on the play by Aris Brooks. It brings up fourth down. Special teams will come out onto the field as the Braves' defense gets a big stop. Try to hand the ball back over to the offense now. Punter for the Yellow Jackets, Cole Patterson. He'll get his first action today. Braves' drive summary, they went touchdown, punt, touchdown. Now West Virginia State, they went touchdown, turnover on downs, and punt. The first time we'll see the junior from Ohio, Patterson, steps into a rugby-style punt, end over end, called for a fair catch by Bunn at the six-yard line. He was swarmed by Yellow Jacket special teams players. If he had tried to let that bounce at the five-yard line, there's a good chance West Virginia State would have tried to tap it down and keep it from bouncing into the end zone. So Bunn perhaps maybe trying to draw a catch interference call. See if he can get somebody to run into him. Good discipline there on special teams by West Virginia State. And they pin the Braves deep in their own territory once again. But UNCP has the lead and the ball with 2.30 to go in the first quarter. It's 14-7, black and gold. And they'll start from their own five-yard line. O'Brien standing right at the goal line, pistol formation. He's got Stanley behind him, gives it to Stanley. Stanley jumps over the line of scrimmage. And there was a mass of bodies there. Excuse me, that's Miles Grant with his first carry of the day. And he picks up about five yards. A good run. Well-designed play. A lot of blocking going low. And an opportunity for the running back to just get out of the shadow of the goalpost. Second and five coming up for the Braves offense. They move it up to their own 10-yard line. Clock runs. They were have about two minutes left now in the first quarter. Two receivers right. One to the left. Snap to O'Brien. Blitz comes. And it's an option keeper for O'Brien. He's taken down across the 15-yard line. That should move the sticks for a Braves first down. So it is a first down UNCP. They needed five. He got about seven. And now the line of scrimmage will be the UNCP 17-yard line. O'Brien throwing to the right. is tipped up in the air and a diving interception made by Dwight Blankenship. No, he couldn't hang on. He used the ground to help make that catch, and the Braves catch a major break there. While O'Brien was telegraphing that he was throwing to the right, one of the linemen there got his hands up, tipped the ball in the air, a great read by Blankenship to dive, try to adjust, but he just couldn't haul it in. Second and 10 for the Braves, clock stopped a minute 32 left to go in the first quarter. 14-7 UNCP, and now they go empty. Three receivers right, two to the left, O'Brien all alone in the shotgun formation. Three down linemen for West Virginia State. They rush just three. O'Brien has time. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. He'll run right up the middle, stutter step, and he'll dive down. Gain of about seven yards there for Patrick O'Brien. Just a good heads-up play by the quarterback. He's not the most mobile guy as far as quarterbacks go. Listed at 6'4", 225, but he has the ability to get upfield when he needs to and felt the pressure in the pocket that time. Just stepped up. 
saw that no one was open. Like that's a numbers game. A three-man rush means there's eight guys in coverage against five wide receivers. O'Brien didn't like his chances of trying to fit anything into a window there. Third down and three, final minute of the first quarter. Snap to O'Brien, four-man rush, steps up, throws to the left side. Bun trying to make the catch. He can't hang on, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down, and the Braves will try out the punting unit once again. And that's certainly the guy the Braves look to go to on third down plays. Top target in the passing game, DJ Bunn, just couldn't make a catch that time. So Matt Davis will come on for his second punt of the day. He stands at his own 10-yard line. Back deep to return for the Yellow Jackets is number 83, A.J. Barrett. We'll see if Davis can get into another punt this time. The Yellow Jackets come after it, and Davis gets it off. It's a high, deep kick called for a fair catch at the 34-yard line. That's the kind of thing UNCP likes to see. There is a flag on the play in the area, perhaps, of holding. It's not where Davis got that punt away, so I don't think it was running into the kicker. And we'll have to see as the officials congregate what this call is for. They seem to be pointing at the West Virginia State side. They'll pick the flag up. They'll say no flag. They were thinking about a face mask penalty, and it will be no foul. So West Virginia State takes over, first and 10, in their own 35-yard line. They trail 14-7 to seven with 40 seconds left in the first quarter. On the Braves Broadcast Network, I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you for joining us today. We're at Institute West Virginia, last regular season road game for UNC Pembroke. The number 18 Braves are 7-1 and one on the season taking on a 1-7 West Virginia State team that scored their touchdown off a big running play, 65 yards by Deontay Brown. The Braves can stop those long plays. We saw Catawba get a lot a week ago. They give it on the ground to Brown. Brown gets met by Elijah Williams. And then some extracurricular pushing and shoving after the play behind the play, but no flag. We'll call it a gain of four for the running back for West Virginia State. They don't need to run another play here before the end of the quarter. And there's about a seven second difference between the play clock and the game clock. Looks like they want to try to run this play. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Down to 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Trailing by seven. Second and seven. Kinnick gets the snap. Play fake. Throws to the right side. Incomplete as it goes through the hands of Tyrell Henderson and falls out of bounds into the West Virginia State bench. So they will need to run one more play now. 1.1 seconds left in the first quarter, and if they're unable to move the chains, the Braves will perhaps begin the second quarter with the football. Another important play on defense for Code Black as West Virginia State faces a third and long. Snap to Kinnick, drops back to throw, fires to the left side, incomplete behind his man, good coverage, no flag on the play. That is how the first quarter will end. West Virginia State now one of four on third downs. Braves three of five. And the Braves will presumably be getting the ball to start the second quarter as West Virginia State will have to punt. We're through 15 minutes at Dickerson Stadium. Braves lead on the road. It's 14 to seven on the Braves broadcast network. Start of the second quarter at West Virginia State University. Cole Patterson on to punt. DJ Bunn back deep to return. The line of scrimmage is the West Virginia State 38-yard line. Braves lined up to come after this punt. Patterson does get it away, and it will go out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Patterson tried to fall down after he had some pressure coming at him. There were some white shirts in the vicinity trying to draw that penalty on UNCP in the ref wasn't having it. So with the Braves offense, 
comes back out onto the field. Patrick O'Brien, the quarterback, as the team switch sides in between the first and second quarter. UNCP now going from left to right across the field at Dickerson Stadium, the campus of West Virginia State University in Institute, West Virginia, not far from the capital city of Charleston. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. It's DJ Bunn on the far side of this formation, a fullback and a running back joining O'Brien in the backfield, shotgun formation. Snap to O'Brien, he'll drop back to throw. Steps up in the pocket, fires a deep ball over the middle, looking for Bunn, and it's incomplete. Fighting off two Yellow Jacket defenders, Kevin Coffey got a hand on it defensively, and Coffey is shaken up on the play. He's rolling around on the turf at about the 20-yard line. That was a beautiful deep ball from Patrick O'Brien. Just couldn't find anybody except the DB's hand. So while Coffey receives some medical attention, we'll give you a message uh, about the upcoming schedule at the conclusion of the soccer regular season this weekend. The Peach Belt Conference Tournament begins for the men on Tuesday and for the women on Wednesday. For the matchups and times, visit uncpbraves.com or the Peach Belt Conference website. Volleyball, UNCP Volleyball returns to Lumpy Guarantee Bank Court on Thursday, November 3rd, when the Braves battle the Shaw Bears at 7 p.m. That'll be a full video stream on UNCP Braves YouTube channel and then back here on the Braves radio channel next weekend for a pair of exhibition men's basketball games on Friday night 7.30 the Braves men's basketball team travels to Chapel Hill to take on the Tar Heels and then goes back on the road actually board a plane to Houston, Texas the University of Houston Cougars they're coached by UNCP alum Kelvin Sampson and that game will take place at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturday night, a week from today, during the football bye week. Football back in action the following Saturday for the home finale as they take on Concord. As the injured player, Kevin Coffey, gets helped back up to his feet. He'll make his way off the field, and we'll have to see if the Braves continue to try to test this West Virginia State secondary, now down one of their starting corners and one of the more senior members of that defensive secondary. Kevin Coffey, a redshirt junior from Beltsville, Maryland, does have two interceptions, and now with that pass deflection, his 10th pass broken up of the year. His backup is number 21, Devon Tyson, although it looks like they'll actually go with number four, Tavon Littleton, who will take over at the other cornerback spot opposite Kyle Alexander. Second and 10 for the Braves, 14.43 to go, second quarter. Give up the middle for Stanley. Tries to break a tackle, just can't do it. He's taken down for a loss of three yards. Defense met him right away in the backfield. And there was nowhere for him to go. Played just about 30 seconds now in the second quarter. Braves will be facing third down and 13 yards to go. UNCP's had some success on third downs today. They're three of five. Yellow Jackets, one of four. Two receivers left, two to the right. O'Brien in the shotgun. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets bring pressure. They do have four down linemen, two, down, two linebackers, and they will blitz. O'Brien throws to the right side, has three caught at about the 40-yard line. That's not going to be enough to move the chains as he was about three yards short of the first down marker. That brings up fourth down. O'Brien making a bid to stay on the field, and then the coaching staff telling him, no, we're going to punt here. So Matt Davis trots back up. This will already be his third punt today. Perhaps not the start UNCP was looking for against a 1-7 and seven West Virginia State Yellow Jackets team. Perhaps looking to dominate the ball a little bit more. The 7-1 and one Braves taking on the 1-7 and seven Yellow Jackets, but give the Yellow Jackets defense a lot of credit. Davis fields a low snap, has plenty of time, and unleashes another cannon. This is a high spiraling kick all the way back inside his 10-yard line is Barrett, and that's a big play to reverse field position. There is a flag on the play back near the line of scrimmage. This could be Matt Davis getting run into, and that might move the chains for UNCP. It's either a false start or an illegal formation against UNCP, and we might have to do this kick over again. And they all opt to re-kick. Obviously, the right call for West Virginia State after Matt Davis just had a monster punt. So the five-yard penalty for the illegal formation means Matt Davis has to do that again. And 
A.J. Barrett will have another chance to try to make something happen as a punt returner. Davis now punting from inside his own 30. He'll be standing at about the 21-yard line when he fields this snap. See if West Virginia State comes after it. They do. Davis does get the kick away, but it's a high short kick. And it will bounce at the 20, takes a Braves roll and down inside the 15-yard line. So all things considered, not much damage there on the penalty. But West Virginia State does get the ball back. They trail 14-7, 13-13, left to go in the first half. And we'll get a timeout now on the field, and we'll take it with them. Braves with a seven-point lead on the road, looking to improve to 8-1. and one. We'll be right back. ready to go at West Virginia State where the Braves on the road they have a 14-7 lead over the Yellow Jackets. 13-13 left to go in the first half it'll be first and 10 for the West Virginia State offense. They begin on their own 14-yard line after a good punt by Matt Davis. Shotgun formation for Matt Kinnick. He will play fake and now roll to the right. Throws it deep along the far sideline and it's incomplete. Good coverage on that play by Tyler Three. We're looking for Tyrell Henderson, just short of midfield, so a strong arm on Matt Kinnick as he tried to just push that ball up the field. And a nice attempt by Tyrell Henderson, but he couldn't haul it in. Second down and 10, with just a hair more than 13 minutes left before halftime. Braves with a seven-point lead. West Virginia State has been outgained so far, 171 to 115. But of those 115 yards, 65 on one play. They give it on the ground, taken down on a DB blitz. Good stop there by Trayvon Gibson. Just stepped up and didn't allow Juwan Etheridge much forward progress. He did fall forward for a gain of about three. So call it third and seven for the Yellow Jacket offense. And the scoring plays have been just a series of big ones. The biggest for West Virginia State, a 65-yard run by Deontay Brown. Raised about a couple long passes, Trey Chandler, and Quay 3 scoring the Braves' touchdown passes of each more than 40 yards. Snap, no wait. There's some motion along the line and a flag on the play. It'll be a false start on the offense. So again, West Virginia State gets flagged for a false start. That's the third one so far today. And it backs them up to third and 12. Three penalties, 15 yards for West Virginia State. Just one penalty for five yards against the Braves, plus the kickoff out of bounds by Matt Davis. So here we go, Braves with just three down linemen in this formation, and they rush four. Stepping up in the pocket, dump down complete over the middle to Barrett, and he has enough for a first down. There's a flag on the play. He's taken down to the 40-yard line. A huge gain, but let's see what the flag is for. It could be a hold. A.J. Barrett was the really only option there as Kinnick got drilled as he threw. Flag is upfield. It's up near where the first down marker was. And if this is a hold, it's possibly on one of the wide receivers on the opposite side of the field. It could also be illegal contact or some sort of defensive penalty. 12.03 left in the second quarter. UNCP 14, West Virginia State 7. The officials talking this one over. All four refs in discussion. They'll pick up the flag and it's a first down for the Yellow Jackets. 
a big third down conversion as they needed 12 yards and they picked up 29 on the pass to A.J. Barrett. Josh Mann's ultimately the man to push him out of bounds. They move the ball up to their own 42-yard line, first and 10 West Virginia State. Two receivers left, two to the right. Kinnick in the shotgun, calls for the snap, gives it up the middle. Another nice hole, tripped up, falling forward is Etheridge. He has about five yards. And brings up a second down and five situation. Where we talked a couple weeks ago, UNCP taking on Kentucky Wesleyan, who was one and five at the time about how they were a good 1-5 team, a deceptively good 1-5 team. Those were Coach Shane Richardson's words. Feels like deja vu all over again for the Braves as they're taking on a 1-7 West Virginia State team that refuses to go away in the first half. Two receivers left, two to the right, shotgun snap to Kinnick, Braves blitz, throw complete, oh, incomplete to the left side. Just a little short as Jawan Etheridge snuck out of the backfield. It looked like he turned his eyes upfield before he had full possession of that ball. And why not? He had a lot of green grass in front of him. Carlos Manning, the linebacker on that side, was blitzing and left space wide open in front of Etheridge on the short little dump off to the running back. Instead, it's third down and five. Clock stopped with 11 minutes and 17 seconds left before halftime. They'll bunch up three receivers to the left side of this formation, one to the right, and a running back to the right of Kinnick on third down and five. Braves showing blitz again. And they'll rush just four. Kinnick steps up in the pocket, throws over the middle. It's incomplete. Great coverage by Khalil Hollis. And he just didn't allow Quinton Gray to ever have a chance to hang on to that ball. As soon as that was in his fingertips, Hollis gave him a nice little push. Great timing, forcing the incompletion, and it's fourth down. Cole Patterson comes on to punt. Braves might have to be careful of a fake here. This is the kind of range where you might try to do that. Fourth and five from their own 47-yard line. West Virginia State with an unorthodox formation. They have three guys lined up along the near side. They snap it to Patterson, and he just boots it away. Bun will call for the fair catch at the 16-yard line. It's made, and that's where the Braves will take over on offense. So a lot of interesting things in that play, thoughts of a fake. The Braves had two guys back to return that punt because I think they were more aware that there might have been some shenanigans on the play it is just a, a fairly normal punt and the Braves take over on offense once again. 11.08 left in the first half. UNCP 14, West Virginia State 7. After some early fireworks, each team scoring on their opening drive. Seems like the defenses have settled in a little bit more. Ronald Porter, the tight end in this formation, he motions from right to left. Dylan Davis, the fullback, stays on the right side. They give it off left side. A little bit of room there for Miles Grant. He gets pushed up in the air. Then keeps the legs turning. They finally whistle the play dead. It looked like he was moving forward, perhaps just being pushed by one of the linemen. Call it a gain of five on the run by Miles Grant. And it'll be second down and five yards to go from the Braves' 22-yard line. Ball spotted on the right side, not all the way over to the right hash. Braves driving from left to right across the field at Dickerson Stadium. Braves wearing white jerseys, white pants, and black helmets, and the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets Black helmets, black jerseys, black pants. So a lot of black and gold around this field. They give it off left side for Grant. He stumbles forward near the first down marker. Let's see where they spot it. Should be enough for a first down. They will move the chains. First down Braves on the carry by Miles Grant. He stays in the game. As the Braves continue to just go one back at a time, a couple plays in a row for each running back, they'll see who can get into a rhythm. Three wide receivers bunched up to the left side of this formation. None on the right. Shotgun formation for O'Brien. Snap. They give it up the middle again for Grant. Not a lot of room for him this time. He'll be taken down by the safety, Allende Warren, who was up crowding the line of scrimmage this time. Gain of just two on the run. Let's see if they stay with Grant as he's finally helped up by one of his linemen. Very late to get up after that tackle. He will stay in the game. Braves move a couple more guys around. Dylan Davis back on as the fullback. DJ Bunn alone on the right side of this formation. 9.30 to go in the second quarter. Braves up 14-7 on the road against the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. Pistol formation, low snap. O'Brien handles, gives it to Grant. He's met in the backfield, stood up and taken down by Mitchell Rowell. And I think he probably lost two yards on that carry. So third and long either way. Looked like the forward progress might have given him back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost a foot. 
Nine minutes to go now in the second quarter, and another opportunity for a stop for the West Virginia State defense. Braves have been hitting 50% on third downs. They're three of six on those third down conversions. Third down and nine from their own 29-yard line. O'Brien in the shotgun now, two receivers on each side. Drops back to pass, steps up against the blitz. Fires over the middle looking for three. Incomplete, it was way over his head. And it looked like he was being held. They'll call it an uncatchable ball. There's a late flag that comes in. Check that, it's one of the shoes of one of the players. No, that's a flag. There are a lot of guys who have a lot of yellow on their cleats. And it's a dead ball, personal foul against UNCP, a late hit. And that's just the kind of penalty the Braves cannot afford in a close game. They'll go half the distance as the line of scrimmage was their own 29. Take them all the way back to their 14-yard line. And now Matt Davis will be punting from near his own goal line. Daniel Butler called for that personal foul. So it'll be fourth down and a long way to go for the Braves. Davis punting from his own goal line. Barrett back to return. He stands at his own 45-yard line. Davis handles the snap, unleashes another good punt. Barrett retreats all the way back to his own 33-yard line where he makes the fair catch. 8.36 to go in the second quarter. UNCP 14, West Virginia State 7. The Braves defense comes back out onto the field. Adidas is the official apparel sponsor for all 17 of UNC Pembroke's varsity athletic teams. Adidas provides some of the most innovative products in the shoe and apparel industry and one of the most recognizable brands worldwide. UNCP thanks Adidas for all of their support and offering the best for Braves athletes. Here we go. Matt Davis, another good punt. He shook off the poor punt earlier and now has given the Braves defense not horrible starting field position. Shotgun formation for Kinnick. Two receivers on each side. He throws short, complete to the left side, and now room for Quinton Gray as he gets a block upfield, turns upfield. He has enough for a first down near midfield. Yellow Jackets offense clicking once again. Gain of 11, so they do move the sticks. Passing yards, the Braves have 140. The Yellow Jackets had 14 before that, or 42 before that 11-yard gain. So now 53 passing yards. They've dominated on the ground, though, 111 to 44 in terms of rushing yards. Play fake, throw again to the left side. Wide open man is Henderson. He has more than enough for a first down, taken down at the 40-yard line. Gain of 14 this time. And dink and dunk, but then the yards after catch a little bit. So under eight minutes to go in the first half, suddenly the Yellow Jackets offense strung together a couple first downs. Just two plays needed to get two first downs that are all the way up to the Braves' 40-yard line. Trailing by seven, trying to even up the score. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Shotgun formation for Kinnick. He's got Brown to his left. Now Brown motions to the right side. Kinnick calls for the snap. Play fake. Looking over the middle, it's tipped up in the air. It falls incomplete. It looked like Alpha Lamine got his hands up on that play. But it falls to the ground, incomplete. Stops the clock with 7.29 left in the second quarter. A 14-7 lead. All the scoring came pretty early in this one. But there's been no scoring yet in the second quarter and no scoring in the final five and a half minutes of the first quarter. Shotgun formation again. Three receivers on the right this time. Kinnick throwing to the right side. Complete at the 30. Turning up field is Baird. He's taken down to the 20-yard line. There is a flag in the play back in the area of holding. And then another flag. They will say... It's against West Virginia State. I'm not sure if it's a false start or a hold. They'll mark off 10 yards, so a holding foul against West Virginia State backs them up to midfield. It'll be second and 20. And the Braves, secondary, well, they need to figure some things out right now because West Virginia State seems to be finding a lot of gaps in the passing game. Seven and a half minutes to go before halftime. Kinnick in the shotgun now. Snap to him, just a four-man rush. Throws short over the middle, complete to Henderson. Henderson breaks a tackle, down to the 40, dives forward near the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and nine for the Yellow Jacket offense. As they drive in Braves territory. Braves will make some wholesale changes, a lot of fresh legs coming out to play defense on this crucial third down play. Another first down in the Yellow Jackets, perhaps in field goal range. But 
They've not been a good field goal kicking team. Just three of 11 on field goal attempts this season. Four man rush, shotgun formation, throw complete over the middle. Another broken tackle for Gray. This time the Braves swarm to him and Eris Brooks wraps him up, takes him down. Gain of five, well maybe just a gain of three. And now, fourth and seven, what do the Yellow Jackets decide to do? Offense will stay on the field. They have the ball at the Braves' 37-yard line. Fourth down, seven yards to go with 6.20 left before halftime. Another opportunity for the Braves' defense to make a fourth down stop. Yellow Jackets 0 for 1 on fourth down so far today. Three receivers bunched up to the right, one to the left. They motion Brown that direction. Dropping back to pass against a blitz. Complete over the middle. Tackle made that looks to be short of the first down marker. The stop made there by Tyler Threet came up from the safety spot. It's a gain of four. They needed seven, and it's a turnover on downs. Braves offense will take over once again. They need to get something going. Their two scoring plays, a 51-yard pass to Quay Threet and a 45-yard pass to Trey Chandler. The one to Chandler was on the opening drive, and it was on that little sweep play the Braves like to run, a little shovel pass, and Chandler just picked up a ton of yards running east-west. Since those big plays, though, in the first quarter, the Braves' offense has been more or less stagnant. They're all bunched up along the line here, first and ten with six minutes to go before halftime. Give it off left side for Stanley, who's chased, and he is flushed out of the backfield. He'll get all the way back to the line of scrimmage, but he was about six or seven yards behind the line of scrimmage for most of that carry and finally just ducked out of bounds for no gain. They'll actually mark him back for a loss of three. I know they're trying to make these big plays. I don't know how many more big plays the Braves offense has left in them. They had three scoring plays a week ago against Catawba of 40 or more yards, and both of the Braves touchdowns have been 45 plus yards here today. Third or Second down and 13, O'Brien with time, he's looking deep, has a man, three makes the catch at the 50, and now it's a foot race to the 35, 30, he's wrapped up and taken down at the 25 yard line, a huge gain for the Braves offense. Way three got way behind the initial coverage, and all that was left was a safety. Ayinde Warner came in and made the stop. But Quay three has another big catch, and the Braves have needed them here today. 44-yard gain from Patrick O'Brien to Quay three puts the Braves all the way up to the West Virginia State 27-yard line. Three receivers left, one to the right. Shotgun snap for O'Brien. Looks for Bunn on the right side, complete to the 20, he spun down maybe at the 20, 21 yard line. Gain of five or six on the pass for UNCP. Th these should be the kinds of plays I think the Braves probably need to go to a little bit more rather than a lot of the deep balls that they've been trying. You know you have something that works and DJ Bunn matched up against a red shirt freshman Tavon Littleton on the near side. Just exploit it for some short gains, see if he can make some yards after the catch. Tight end in this formation on the left side, two receivers left, one to the right. They play fake, throw over the middle for Stedman Rush, who has a catch, and he is down to near the goal line, just short of a touchdown. What an acrobatic catch by tight end Stedman Rush, who came over the middle, and now the Braves have first and goal from the one, called the two yard line. Dylan Davis late to come onto the field. The Braves will make a substitution. Looks like they'll just go jumbo here. First and goal from the two. Stedman rushes on the right side of this formation. Davis to the right side, and Patrick O'Brien is under center. There's a timeout before the snap. Timeout taken by West Virginia State. Snap went to O'Brien. He was standing straight up. There was a pile of bodies all down at the line of scrimmage because there was a timeout before the play, but some of the linemen still decided let's try to block or something. Timeout on the field will take it as well. 3.41 left in the first half. Braves up 14-7 and threatening they'll have first and goal when we come back.
ready to go after the West Virginia State timeout. UNCP hasn't used any of theirs. There's 341 left to go before halftime. It's first and goal from the one for the Braves offense, trying to go up by two scores. So you just give it to big man Patrick O'Brien, the quarterback, who certainly is big enough to just fall forward and get that yard. You also have Dylan Davis in this formation, a fullback ready to block for Rontonio Stanley. Come out in the pistol formation, O'Brien, Looks to his left, play clock down to six. Some motion along the line, they give it up the middle for Stanley. Stanley gets a good push, falls into the end zone. Touchdown, Braves. No, they'll mark him short. They will mark him short. I look like everybody along the line of scrimmage was in the end zone there, except the ball carrier, Antonio Stanley. He just fell short of the goal line. So it's second down and goal. Braves hustle up to the line. QB keeper, flag on the play. O'Brien looked like he was in. It'll be a false start on the offense. That backs him up to the six yard line. They tried to just catch West Virginia State sleeping. They all hustled up to the line, but there was really no kind of snap count and just a quick snap. Someone went too early. So it's second and goal from the six now for the UNCP offense. Three minutes left to go before halftime. UNCP leads West Virginia State 14 to seven here in Institute, West Virginia. Last regular season road game for the Braves. They'll be off next week before toasting Concord for senior day in Pembroke. Pistol formation. Oh, a high snap, a flag on the play. And that could be a very fortuitous flag as that snap finally comes to a rest back at the 36 yard line. So there was no flag on the play as the official makes that call. Sorry if you can't hear it at home, ladies and gentlemen. We don't have a, a ref mic available for you here today. What they're saying was the uh, the play clock never reset, and West Virginia State was making a timeout. So the Braves dodge a huge bullet. It would have basically been facing third and goal from 30-plus yards out. Now it's second and goal from the six. One receiver on each side, tight ends in this formation, pistol. As O'Brien gets the snap, gives it up the middle for Stanley. Stanley jukes his way forward. He's in, standing up. Touchdown, Braves. 2.23 left before halftime. It's 20-7 UNCP. Matt Davis will come on and attempt an extra point. Well, I'll tell you, the special teams came out, and Matt Davis, oh, he was up counting guys along the line. He was looking for Matt Davis. B.J. Bunn was ready to hold. Matt Davis now comes on and will attempt this PAT to put the Braves up by 14. Snap is down, the extra point attempt is up, and it splits the uprights. 2.23 left before halftime. Braves 21, Yellow Jackets 7. We'll be right back. Braves fans, ever wondered why our sponsor, Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC, has such a long name? One reason is the tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great-looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top-of-the-line Cadillacs, so why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube, and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC, located next to Lumberton High School. Matt Davis's kickoff goes for a touchback, and West Virginia State's offense will go back to work 2.23 left before halftime. UNCP leading the Yellow Jackets 21 to seven. We're here at Dickerson Stadium on the campus of West Virginia State University in Institute, West Virginia. Gorgeous day, 76 degrees at kickoff, unseasonably warm for late October.
as the one in seven Yellow Jackets look for a shocking upset of the number 18 UNCP Braves. For a while, it looked like they were going to keep it close. The Braves able to create some separation with that last drive to go up by two scores. Three receivers bunched up to the far side. Shotgun snap to Kinnick. Three-man rush throws complete to about the 29-yard line. A good effort to come back to the ball there by Tyrell Henderson. The way that just initial ball was, uh, someone made the catch coming back to it. I thought it might have been intercepted at first. Did a double take. It was, in fact, a four-yard completion for West Virginia State. Two minutes to go now in the second quarter. Kinnick drops back to pass. He's blitzed, and he is sacked on the play. Khalil Vance wrapped him up and takes him down. Third and long coming up. Let's see if the Braves will use a timeout. A minute 50. The clock continues to run. And now it's third down and 13 yards to go for West Virginia State with a minute 40 left. Yellow Jackets trailing by 14. West Virginia State will get the ball to start the second half. So the Braves will perhaps be trying to put together one last drive here at the end of the first half. Blitz again. Kinnick flushed out of the pocket, and this time he sacked again. Tajay Lyles the first one to him. Back-to-back -back sacks. It's fourth down. Timeout UNCP, no doubt about it as the Yellow Jackets were able to run off plenty of time before that play, but with still a minute 20 left before halftime, the Braves will have an opportunity to throw the ball some more and try to add to their lead. And it's been a good day through the air for UNCP, 210 passing yards already, 47 yards on the ground for the Braves. And for the Yellow Jackets, after that sack, they have 100 yards rushing and 88 yards passing. Quick recap of the scoring. The Braves took the opening drive for a touchdown. It was a 45-yard pass from Patrick O'Brien to Trey Chandler on that little sweet play. He went to the house for a touchdown. West Virginia State responded with a 65-yard run by Deontay Brown, a short drive. They scored to even it up. And then UNCP, a little bit later in the first quarter, scored on a 51-yard touchdown pass to Quay 3. And then after both teams went cold a little bit on offense, Braves punched it in on their last drive, a six-yard run by Rontonio Stanley. Short punt, a lot of contact. After the punter finally got that punt away, Cole, er, Cole Patterson is down on the turf inside his own 10. I don't see a flag, and the West Virginia State sideline wants an explanation. The punt bounced out of bounds short of midfield. I think perhaps the Braves maybe got a piece of it, and then on the follow-through hit him. He's able to get off and get up and jog off the field under his own power, but there are some boos coming from the near sideline here, the home sideline here at Dickerson Stadium. Braves take over, starting at the 40-yard line in West Virginia State Territory. They're already pretty close to Matt Davis' field goal range, as long as a 53-yarder. Not a lot of wind here today. A minute, 11 seconds left. The Braves have two timeouts with which to work. They come out in a shotgun, two receivers to the left, two to the right for Patrick O'Brien, who's had a pretty good game so far. O'Brien, 11 of 17, with 210 yards passing. He's completed about 65% of his throws so far today. He stands at the opponent's 45-yard line, play clock at 18, gets the snap. Blitz comes, O'Brien flushed out to the right. Tucks it, and he'll try to run. Across the 40, slides down about the 35. They keep him in bounds. Clock runs with a minute left to go before halftime. Looks like UNCP will keep the timeouts in the back pocket. There is a flag on the play. The clock stops with 58 seconds left. It's a hold on the offense. Looks like they'll get number 75, Lawrence Keyes, the left tackle. And now they'll add some more time to the game clock as some time ran off after the end of that play. I'm sure the Braves would have rather let the clock run, keep the result of the play, which is a five-yard run, rather than get hit with a 10-yard holding penalty. So it'll be first and 20 from midfield for the Braves' offense. Clock runs now. Now there's a minute left. And the Braves a little bit further behind the eight ball here. Snap to O'Brien. Quick throw to the left side, complete to Chandler. Chandler trying to get out of bounds. I don't think he did. He's back near the original line of scrimmage at the 40-yard line. Clock continues to run. Third down and 10 coming up. Now the Braves will stop the clock with one of their two remaining timeouts. I'm out on the field for UNCP. We'll keep it here as we continue to run through some of these offensive stats for the Braves. Quay three, four catches, 110 yards, and a touchdown. Trey Chandler, two catches, 54 yards, and a touchdown. Stedman Rush, a 21-yard catch, 
B.J. Bunn, three catches with just 18 yards. John Allen and Rick Mack each have a catch. Allen has an 11-yard catch. Mack for a five-yard catch. On the ground, Miles Grant, five carries, 17 yards. Rontonio Stanley, nine carries, 16 yards, and a touchdown. Patrick O'Brien, two carries, 14 yards. So not a lot going in the running game for UNCP. Meanwhile, for West Virginia State, that big, long run by Deontay Brown means he has eight carries for 110 yards and a touchdown. The rest of the West Virginia State offense, in terms of running the ball, is net minus 10 yards. A.J. Barrett, the top receiver for the Yellow Jackets, he has 34 yards receiving on two catches. Matt Kinnick is 8 of 17 for just 88 yards. Big second down play coming up for UNCP. Second and 11 with 44 seconds left. They're down to just one timeout. Four-man rush. O'Brien steps up. He's hit as he throws. Lobs a deep ball to the left side. Bun tips it up in the air. It falls incomplete. O'Brien got crushed on that play, and he's down near midfield. Thirty-eight point three seconds left. There's third and eleven coming up for the Braves offense, but more importantly, their starting quarterback Patrick O'Brien is hurt on the play as he receives medical attention. Will step aside. Braves up twenty-one to seven in the final minute of the second quarter. Big hit coming there from Dennis Gardeck. Means Patrick O'Brien needed to be helped off the field. Hope it's nothing more than just the wind knocked out of him. But it does mean that Reggie Penner needs to come in and operate the offense. Third down and 11 from the West Virginia State 41-yard line. Dropping back to pass is Pinner. Pump fake. He'll be flushed out to the right. He's running. Throws over the middle. Diving attempt made. Chandler, did he hang on? No. Incomplete. They'll say he used the ground to make that catch. So it's an incomplete pass, and it's fourth down. Boy, if the Braves had run the ball there, you think maybe you get in field goal range for Matt Davis. And it looks like now the Braves will attempt a very long field goal. This will be a 58-yarder for Matt Davis from the left hash. He can hit from about this deep does during warm-ups. A.J. Barrett will be back to return, and now there's a timeout before the kick. He sent it up in the air. It did miss wide right, but there is a timeout taken by West Virginia State trying to ice the kicker. So it is. it was long enough. It just missed to the right. So Davis, a little frustrated with himself now, as they get to stretch out that leg and figure out what's going on. How about this? The Such confidence in your kicker, Matt Davis, to attempt a 58-yard field goal here before halftime wonder what the Braves are thinking uh, what's going through the minds of the coaching staff right now Patrick O'Brien injured on that last play he is up and walking around on the far sideline it looks like so hopefully it's not too serious the Braves will have their starting quarterback for the second half UNCP with a 21 to 7 lead as we wind down the end of the second quarter there's 31 seconds left fourth down and 11 from the West Virginia State 41 yard line each team with one timeout remaining Looks like the field goal unit stays on the field. Matt Davis will attempt a 58-yard field goal from the left hash. Wind swirling now. He is kicking with the wind, but it is blowing a little bit to the right. So he has had a little bit of time to calibrate it now. B.J. Bunn on to hold. The snap, the kick, it's long enough. Davis' 58-yard field goal attempt is good. Oh, my goodness. With 25 seconds left, the Braves take a 24-7 lead, and Matt Davis is the man of the moment. Timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. And the Braves can celebrate right now. They have 25 seconds left before halftime. We'll see what the Yellow Jackets can muster. We'll be right back.
there's a lot of incredulity right now in the press box. Matt Davis just hit a 58-yard field goal to put the Braves up 24-7 with 25 seconds left before halftime. Davis now kicking off, and this is another outstanding kickoff that goes out of the back of the end zone. 58 yards is a career long, in, in case you are concerned, ladies and gentlemen. He's not ever in a game made one longer than 58 yards. But 58 yards is really, there are a lot of uh, big Division I kickers and even professional kickers where they don't feel necessarily confident in kicking a 58-yard field goal. Disclaimer, the wind was behind him on that kick, but it also would have been good from another five yards or so. 25 seconds left, West Virginia State comes out on offense, down by 17, just looking for something before halftime. They have one timeout left, and they have to go 75 yards. Shotgun formation for Kinnick. They will keep it on the ground off right side. Taken down from behind is Brown. The Braves will try to rip it loose. He's taken down for a gain of about four. And it doesn't look like anyone's stopping the clock now. That will probably be the final play of the first half. And clock winding down. Looks like the Yellow Jackets in no hurry to run another play. The official in no hurry to even spot the ball. Four seconds left. Let's see if they come up and run anything. Kinnick just says no thanks. So we'll go to halftime. Braves with a 24-7 lead at the break over the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. You're listening to UNCP Braves football on the Braves Broadcast Network.
welcome back to Institute West Virginia. The UNCP Braves, the 18th ranked team in Division II football, coming in at 7-1, and one, taking on the 1-7 and seven Yellow Jackets. And the Braves have a 24-7 lead as we get ready to begin the third quarter. For the Braves Broadcast Network, I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you for joining us today. Let's take a quick look at the halftime stats. Braves with nine first downs compared to seven for the Yellow Jackets. And total offense, Braves 266, West Virginia State 193. Penalties have come back to bite the Braves a little bit, but they've also hurt the Yellow Jackets at times as well. Four penalties, 34 yards for the Braves. It's right near their season average. Four penalties, 25 yards for West Virginia State. Braves have dominated time of possession, 17 to about 13. Braves are 3 of 7 on third downs. West Virginia State, 2 of 8 on third downs. And the Braves have stopped the Yellow Jackets both times they went for it on fourth downs. Individually, Miles Grant, Rontonio Stanley, and Patrick O'Brien on the ground combined have just not done very much in the rushing game today for UNCP. Just 47 yards on the ground. The Yellow Jackets have a combined 105 rushing yards, but 115 of those come from Deontay Brown with a 65-yard carry. The other two guys who have carries, Etheridge and Kinnick, have minus 10 rushing yards. In terms of passing, Patrick O'Brien, 12 of 19 for 219 yards, two touchdowns. He was injured late in the game, or late in the second quarter. We'll have to see how much of him we see in the second half. His counterpart, Matt Kinnick, 8 of 17 for 88 yards. The Braves have Quay Three, who's been their lead receiver, four catches, 110 yards, and a touchdown. As Matt Davis's kickoff to start the third quarter is high, it'll be fielded at the one-yard line by Brown. Brown cuts up field, and he's taken down at the 20-yard line. And that's where the Yellow Jackets will take over. The buzz in the stadium throughout halftime was Matt Davis, who in the final 30 seconds of the first half kicked a 58-yard field goal. It's a new UNC Pembroke school record, and as of the beginning of games today, is the longest field goal made in NCAA Division II football this season. Matt Kinnick leads the Yellow Jackets offense back out onto the field. They trail 24-7 to begin the third quarter. They go from left to right across their home field in Institute, West Virginia. Snap, play fake. Oh, they give it to the left side to the running back who fumbles the ball. Who's fallen on it? The Braves were the first ones to it as Matthew Thomas Quick jumped on the fumble by Deontay Brown. It's a turnover, and the Braves take over first and 10 inside the red zone. One play, a fumble by Brown. And the Braves' offense is in business to begin the third quarter. The only question is who will be the signal caller. It is number 12, Patrick O'Brien. Nice to see he wasn't too seriously injured after taking a big hit on a deep throw late in the second quarter. 14.46 left to go in the third quarter. UNCP up 17, looking to add to it, coming off a turnover. One receiver on each side, shotgun formation for O'Brien, so a couple tight ends in this formation. Be first and ten from the 11-yard line. Braves can still get a first down without scoring a touchdown. O'Brien throws deep to the right side, looking for a bun in the end zone. It's broken up, incomplete. Nice defense at the last second there. That's number seven, Kevin Coffey. He was also injured in that first half. It's also nice to see him back out on the field. Perhaps though, not if you're a Braves fan, because well, you'd like to see uh, more favorable matchups for UNCP, but you never like to see guys seriously hurt. So. I'm going to say it's nice to see him back out there. Second and 10 for the Braves. They stand at the West Virginia State 11-yard line. Rontonio Stanley is the running back to the left of quarterback Patrick O'Brien. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Now motion man, it's Chandler. They shovel it to him, tries to cut up the middle of the field. Now jukes back towards the right side. There's just not a lot of room for him. Barely gets across the 10 to about the 9-yard line. Brings up a third and eight situation for UNCP. Tackle there made by Dennis Gardeck, junior from Lake in the Hills, Illinois. He's the leading tackler for the Yellow Jackets at 85 tackles coming into today's game. A week ago at Glenville State for West Virginia State. It was a loss for them, but he had 19 total tackles. Here we go, third down and nine for the Braves, standing at about the 10-yard line. O'Brien will look to throw. Left side, has a man bobbled incomplete. Allen tipped it back up in the air. A DB had a shot at it. Tavon Littleton didn't really locate it, and it falls harmlessly to the turf. So the Braves get gifted outstanding field position. They move the ball forward a yard and will now have to settle for a field goal attempt from Matt Davis. And this is uh, well, a chip shot for him after hitting a 58-yarder career-long and a school-record-long field goal in the first half. 
this field goal attempt will be not much longer than an extra point. Snap is down, the kick is up, and the field goal attempt is good. Add three more points to the Braves' lead. Davis's field goal from about 27 yards is good, and the Braves take a 27-7 lead with just a minute off the clock here in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Braves fans, Adidas is the official apparel sponsor for all 17 of UNC Pembroke's varsity athletic teams. Adidas provides some of the most innovative products in the shoe and apparel industry and is one of the most recognizable brands worldwide. UNCP thanks Adidas for all of their support and offering the best for Braves athletes. 13.56 left in the third quarter. Braves forced a fumble on the first play of the second half. Kind of stalled out on offense. Settled for a Matt Davis field goal. He's now 2 of 2 kicking field goals here today. It's a 27-7 Braves lead. The number 18 team in Division II college football looking to improve to 8-1 against a West Virginia State team that's just 1-7. Kickoff from Davis will be fielded right at the goal line and taken out by the Yellow Jackets, Barrett. Barrett breaks a couple tackles. He's taken down across the 20 to about the 25-yard line. Trying to punch the ball loose there at the end was Damian Whitaker, I think, will be Yellow Jackets ball. I don't think the ball ever actually came out. First and 10, West Virginia State. And that last fumble was, I believe, the first turnover of the game for either team. It's been pretty clean both sides. A couple penalties each way, but nothing too costly for either team. The Braves committed more in terms of penalty yards in the first half, 34 yards versus just 25. But nothing bigger than a forced fumble and an offense taking over inside the red zone. Braves couldn't move the ball forward. Settled for a 27-yard field goal, and now the Yellow Jackets look to get back in rhythm. Kinnick in the pistol formation, gives it off left side. A nice hole, Brown across the 30. He's taken down to about the 31-yard line, a gain of five or six yards for Deontay Brown. So Brown, the main guy who hurt the Braves in the first half, and it came mostly on one play, a 65-yard run that evened up the scoring. On the Yellow Jackets' first possession. Now Brown will get a breather. Juwan Etheridge will come back in and be the running back for West Virginia State. One receiver on each side. Tight ends on each side as well. Shotgun formation for quarterback Kinnick. Keep it on the ground to the left side with Etheridge. Surging forward. I see no gain on the play there. Great push up front by the Braves' defensive line. Including Tyler Hinton, who was one of the bodies in there to plug up the hole. Third down and three for the Yellow Jackets. Just under 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. It's a 27-7 UNCP lead. And now this is kind of turning into a must convert for West Virginia State. You think that if they give the ball up here, the Braves might score again and kind of put this one away. Motion man to the near side of the formation is gray. Throw to the left side, complete. First down, West Virginia State. As Kinnick stood tall in the pocket against a blitz, fired a pass to his man. And that'll be enough for a first down. So they have the ball now at their own 40, spotted on the left hash as the Yellow Jackets drive from left to right across the field. The pass complete to A.J. Barrett there for eight yards. The Yellow Jackets with black helmets, black jerseys, black pants. Braves wearing black helmets, white jerseys, and white pants. First and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Pistol snap goes to Kinnick. Gives it off left side for Etheridge. Etheridge has some room along the far sideline. Gets licked at about the 45-yard line. He took a big hit there. Gain of about four. As he pops himself back up. Good aggressiveness there by Etheridge. as He's trying to argue to stay in the game. He'll do that. Also nice to see Etheridge. He's a running back. Oh, now they'll take him out. 
It'll be Trey Davis who'll come in and be the running back. Etheridge doesn't wear gloves on his hands. Most running backs nowadays, you, you see them wear those gloves to improve their grip. It's a clear, beautiful day, so he says, I'll go barehanded. Two receivers to the right, none to the left. Play fake, throw to the right side, complete. More than enough for a first down into Braves territory across the 45 to the 42-yard line. A.J. Barrett just sort of backpedaling his way after making that catch on a little comeback route. And that's how he kept the legs going past the initial contact. So the Yellow Jackets now threatening. You're in Braves territory, first and 10 at the 42-yard line. 11 minutes and 8 seconds left in the third quarter. They trail by 20 points haven't had any success in sustaining drives and scoring points. Never gotten into the red zone yet today. Two receivers to the left, none to the right. Pistol formation behind a fullback. It's a flea flicker back to the quarterback, hit as he throws, and the pass will come up short, incomplete. Like the trickeration there, but a very big hit there from Khalil Vance. He came free along the outside edge, blindsided Kinnick, and that affected the throw. Fortunately for Kinnick, it didn't turn into a a free ball. It just kind of took about 20% off of the distance he wanted it to go, but about the same trajectory. Clock stop, 10.50 left in the third quarter. 27-7 UNCP lead. Second and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Snap to Kinnick. Gives it up the middle. Hole. And a nice run up the middle by Deontay Brown. He has about eight yards. That gets most of the distance they needed. Bring up a third and short. Brown came into the day averaging just 3.8 yards per carry at 155 rushing yards. He could get to 150 rushing yards in this game. He had 110 in the first half. Remember, we're eight games into the season now. He had just 40 carries, 155 yards through eight games. So he's having a career day, no doubt, here this afternoon. Shotgun snap, give it up the middle, and nothing doing there for Trey Davis. The running back gets stuffed for a loss of two. Khalil Vance wraps him up. Fourth and long coming up. That looked like a loss of about five. They were in the shotgun, tried to sweep it on the running back, uh, just trying to get it out to the outside, and somebody missed a block. So the punting unit comes out. It's been kind of the story here today for West Virginia State. They can get a couple first downs together, but really sustaining the momentum has been the problem. B.J. Bunnell will be back deep to return for UNCP off a punt from Cole Patterson. High snap, Patterson sends a high kick. Bunnell walk away from it. It bounces at about the five-yard line into the end zone. And touchback for the Braves offense. So Bun has been in, the, uh, in a tough area in terms of trying to field some punts, oftentimes standing inside his own 10-yard line. And as a punt returner, that's a tough call to make. Do you let it bounce and hope that it bounces into the end zone or do you try to fair catch inside the 10 and uh, just let your offense take over from there? This time Bun makes the right call as the West Virginia State coverage team couldn't get up to it. Media timeout, but we'll keep it here for a message from our sponsor, Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC. If you ever wonder why they have such a long name? One reason is the tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great-looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top-of-the-line Cadillacs, so why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube, and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac GMC, located next to Lumberton High School. And Braves fans, UNC Pembroke men's basketball heads to Chapel Hill to face the Tar Heels in exhibition action next Friday. Tickets are available through GoHeels.com, but if you're a member of the Braves club, they're also available through the GPAC box office at UNCP by calling the box office at 910-521-6361. If you can't make it, we'll also have a radio broadcast on the UNCP Braves radio channel. That's the one you're listening to right now. For that game and the game at Houston the following night as UNCP men's basketball kicks off their season with a back-to-back -back against D1 competition. Obviously, the connections there, UNCP basketball head coach Ben Miller was an assistant under Roy Williams and... Houston head basketball coach Kelvin Sampson is a UNCP grad. That's how UNCP gets those two very cool, exciting games. 9.30 left in the third quarter. O'Brien and the offense are back out. Shotgun snap to O'Brien. Swings it to the right side. Complete. Looks like Chandler has absolutely nowhere to go, and he'll lose about four yards. West Virginia State sniffed that out from the get-go. It's a loss of four on the completed pass. So just a missed block there on the receiver screen to the outside. The defense was all over it. 
Second down and 14 coming up for the Braves offense. They have the ball and the lead, 27 to seven, with nine minutes left in the third quarter. Braves at seven and one, playing their last regular season road game against a one and seven West Virginia State team. O'Brien rolls to the left, throws complete to Bunn, who slides down, makes the catch at about the 23. Just not a lot of ground there, and the throw a little off target doesn't allow B.J. Bunn to get anything after the catch. So it's a third and long for UNCP, called third and eight for the black and gold offense. As they drive the field right to left across the natural grass field at Dickerson Stadium. Sunny, gorgeous skies. It's about 80 degrees in Institute West Virginia now as the wind a slight breeze blowing from left to right across the field. Barely a cloud in the sky, though. Just a fantastic day to watch some D2 football. Shotgun formation for O'Brien. Three receivers to the right. Bunn alone on the left side. Yellow Jackets show Brits. They blitz. They bring pressure. Slant over the middle. Complete to Bunn. Spins past the tackle. He has enough for a first down. Across the 35-yard line up to the 36, and that was a clutch conversion for UNCP. Tackle made there by Kevin Coffey. But B.J. Bunn, who was relatively quiet in the first half, had just three catches for 18 yards. They go to him on back-to-back -back plays. He comes through, gets the Braves a first down. The line of scrimmage is now the UNCP 36-yard line. They need to get to their own 46 to move the chains again. And they're bunched up along the line of scrimmage now. Just two receivers, two tight ends, pistol formation. It's O'Brien with Rontonio Stanley behind him. They give it to Stanley off left side. And there's just not a lot of room for him to work there. Quay Threat fighting off two Yellow Jackets, and Threat is not known as being a great blocker. He's this is a wide receiver after all. So we'll call it just a gain of one or two on the run for Rontonio Stanley. Yellow Jackets have been all over the Braves ground game today. A little surprising because on the season, Yellow Jackets opponents have been averaging about 197 rushing yards per game. Unless the Braves break a big play, they're not going to be anywhere near the pace for that. See if the Braves make the adjustment and just keep trying to air it out. Two receivers left, one to the right, tight end on the left side as well. Motion man is Allen. They will play fake it. And now O'Brien rolls and throws, has Stedman rush. Rush breaks a tackle. He's across the 50 to the 45. First down, Braves. Short pass to the tight end, Stedman rush, and he has a first down. Second catch of the day for Stedman rush. He picked up a big 21-yard catch to set the Braves up with first and goal late in the second quarter on his previous catch. Not a guy who gets a lot of catches for the Braves. Just three catches for 33 yards coming into today's game. He's already doubled his yardage total. Just a couple catches here today. First and 10 for the Braves, up by 20 with a little over six minutes to go in the third quarter. O'Brien throwing again to the 40-yard line. Spun down is Rick Mack. That'll be a gain of about five to the 40-yard line. Good rhythm throw for Patrick O'Brien. You can see West Virginia State's defense starting to get a little tired. The Braves playing with some tempo. Going no huddle, just substituting their guys in and out relatively quickly. And it's caused problems for the Yellow Jackets defense. Tight end on the right side of this formation is Jalen Nixon, the sophomore from Durham. He doesn't have any catches yet this year. One receiver to the left, one to the right. It's a bun on the near side of this formation. Play fake, looking for Bunnies. Open at the middle of the field to the 20. Bun, stiff arm taken down to the 15-yard line. First down, Braves on a big pass and catch to B.J. Bun. Gain of 25 on the play. And don't look now, but here comes B.J. Bun. So Braves, I'm not sure if it was a conscious or unconscious thing to go away from him in the first half, but it's a guy who is averaging 98 yards per game as a receiver this season. Also add some yardage in the punt return and kick return games, but that's just passing yards, 98 receiving yards per game. First and 10 for the Braves at the Yellow Jackets 13 yard line. Three receivers to the left, none to the right. Stanley to the right of O'Brien, give it to Stanley, running up the middle, pushes forward, gets about five yards. The O-line got a nice push that time. 450 left to go in the third quarter. The Braves just controlling time of possession now. And they're up 27 to seven and a touchdown here puts them absolutely in the driver's seat as we get ready to come down the home stretch. Dylan Davis, the fullback, got a breather. He'll come back in as John Allen heads to the sidelines. Now the Braves will bunch up along the line of scrimmage again. Jumbo package in the game. Just one ride, two wide receivers. E.J. Bunn is in the slot on the right side. 
Pistol formation, give it up the middle for Stanley. Stanley has some blocks, dives forward near the first down marker. It'll be third and about two or three for the Braves offense. Four minutes left to go in the third quarter now. UNCP 27, West Virginia State 7. And for the Yellow Jackets, their one score came on a 65-yard run on their first possession. Since then, it's been lights out by the Braves' defense. Now they'll spread the field, the Braves. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Third and three from the eight-yard line. O'Brien in the shotgun with Stanley to his left. Drops back to throw, has Bunn on the left side. Bunn needs to get the yards after the catch. Breaks the tackle, steps out of bounds at about the three. I don't think that's enough to move the chains. Let's see where they actually spot him. They actually say he stepped out at the five. So it'll be fourth and one, and a decision now for the Braves offense. You take the potentially guaranteed three points with Matt Davis, or do you try to put this game away right now? The offense stays on the field, fourth and one for UNCP from the five yard line. Two receivers to the left, two to the right, play clock at 10, game clock a little over three minutes in the third quarter. Snap O'Brien, option keeper, and he dives down to about the two yard line. Let's see where they spot this. Should be enough to move the chains. Looked like the line to gain was about the four, and I think he got to at least the three, if not the two. Clock is continuing to run under three minutes. Now they'll stop the clock as they need to bring the chains out to measure this. Gutsy call by the Braves. Very aggressive to go for it on fourth and one inside the five yard line going in. It would have been a chip shot field goal for Matt Davis. And said an option keeper. It looked like O'Brien bobbled it a little bit and it's also looks to be a fairly unfavorable spot, maybe the three or even three and a half yard line. I thought for sure he got down inside the three to about the two. So the chain gang will have to determine this one, and it's going to be close. O'Brien standing near, and that's enough. First down Braves, the marker about midway through the length of the football. So it wasn't even that close, certainly close enough to bring out the the chains, but it wasn't like it's a, you say, a game of inches. The Braves had it by a, a couple of inches there. So with 2.56 to go in the third quarter, Braves offense stays on the field. It's been a lengthy drive so far. As they continue to just possess the ball, they spread the field now. First and goal inside the five. There's three receivers to the right, one to the left, and the running back is Rontonio Stanley. Shotgun formation for Patrick O'Brien. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets blitz here to try to force a mistake. They do come after him. The throw goes to the right side. It's over the head of Bunn, incomplete. Let him too far, and it brings up second down. So I know Bunn is the favorite target inside the red zone, but at a certain point, I'm not sure the Braves should even be throwing the ball at this point. Uh, you've, got, you've had success running the ball on this drive. You've got a, a couple of running backs who certainly have a nose for the end zone, in particular Rontonio Stanley, who already has one today. I, th I think you just keep it on the ground, despite the day that Bunn has had. Seven catches, 68 yards, and still looking for that first touchdown. They give it to Stanley. He dances forward. The pile's into the end zone. Stanley dives, and he is in. Touchdown, Braves. 2.39 to play in the third quarter. UNCP 33, West Virginia State 7. Extra point coming up for Matt Davis. And you can see the frustrated faces on the near sideline, West Virginia State players. A couple times the defense thought they had the Braves stopped, just couldn't get off the field. And this is starting to turn into the game the Braves, I think, needed to have, needed to sort of establish themselves as a team that's, uh, when facing a team that has an inferior record, not going to let them hang around as Davis tacks on the extra point. 2.39 to play in the third quarter. The Braves go up 34-7. to We'll be back right after this.
Davis to kick off now for the Braves. Davis has had a busy day for the black and gold, kicking a couple field goals. He's been their punter. He's also the point-after attempt guy. This kick will bounce at about the 15-yard line. Gets past Brown, who scoops it up in the end zone. Now has to take it out because he picked it up near the goal line. Breaks a tackle at the 1. He's forced out at the 6-yard line. Great coverage on that play and a serious miscue by the Yellow Jackets return team. Man down on the play along the near sideline. As there'll be a, a moment of timeout here for the injured player to make his way back over to the Yellow Jackets bench. It looks like one of the up men. But certainly for West Virginia State, this, this game has gone from not great to worse. It's actually running back Deontay Brown, who's been their star player on offense and special teams. That's certainly not the guy Yellow Jackets fans want to see down on the sidelines as he was running out of bounds. Looked like he took a, a tough hit going to the sidelines. It might have even been helmet to helmet. If, it, if so, it was one the officials missed. Braves fans ever wondered why our sponsor, Lumberton Chevrolet Buick Cadillac GMC, has such a long name? One reason is there's a tremendous variety of cars and trucks they offer to meet every need. Great looking Chevrolets, Buicks, Cadillacs, and even GMC SUVs and trucks. They have everything from budget vehicles to top of the line Cadillacs, so why would you shop anywhere else? Try their quick lube and while your vehicle is being serviced, you can see for yourself. That's Lumberton Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac, GMC, located next to Lumberton High School. First and ten for the Yellow Jackets as they go from left to right across the field. They start at their own seven. Kinnick is in the pistol formation, and they play fake. Now looking to the near side, a deep ball tipped up in the air incomplete. Man-on-man -man coverage by Sean Everett. He never really turned around, just timed up Tyrell Henderson's jump with his own and batted the pass incomplete. 2.28 to go in the third quarter. The Braves' lead is 34-7. to and This is turning into a must-score kind of drive for the Yellow Jackets. They also have to be very careful playing in the shadow of their own goalpost and in the shadow of their new athletic complex built in the last five or six years. It has Gregory V. Monroe Athletic Complex. It's a weight room, locker room facility. Gorgeous, but... Oh, the throw is intercepted! And taking it back the other way, touchdown, Braves! Pick six! Can't see who that was. I believe it's Yavel Morris. And that might have just iced the game. We'll have to see who that, uh, who that DB was. Dangerous throw by Matt Kinnick. Throws to the left side. Intercepted by Yavel Morris. And he'll take it back for a touchdown. 40-7 to Braves. Matt Davis on to attempt the extra point. It's up. And it is good. And the wheel's starting to fall apart here for West Virginia State. 2.21 to go in the third quarter. The Braves stretch their lead 41-7. We'll be back right after this. One of the shortest pick sixes you'll ever see. Dangerous throw by Matt Kinnick to the left side. Morris intercepted, and then just an eight-yard interception return for a touchdown. That's one of the dangers of throwing from your own end zone. Davis's kick goes into the end zone. It'll be caught by Barrett, and he'll take a knee about seven yards back in the end zone. 2.21 to play in the third quarter. UNCP 41, West Virginia State 7. The Yellow Jackets now have turned the ball over in their own territory a couple of times. Braves have turned it into two touchdowns, and this lead fairly comfortable now for UNCP. Kinnick will remain the quarterback as the team trots back out onto the field. 
West Virginia State, the UNCP defense, it looks like starting to rotate in some other guys, perhaps, but I think it's still too early to say the fat lady's singing yet. Two receivers on each side, Kinnick in the shotgun, first and 10 from the 25, throw over the middle, complete spinning pass to tackle to the 40, and wrapped up, taken down, is Quinton Gray, more than enough for a first down. They needed 10, he got about 12, and he did a nice job to hold on to that ball, despite a big hit from one of the Braves' DBs at the back end of that play. Actually, Christopher Plotch, second string middle linebacker, was one who kind of dropped back in coverage there. And at 6'1", 215, he's certainly capable of laying a big hit. Staying in the shotgun, three receivers on the left this time. Kinnick throwing to the right, one-handed grab by Tyrell Henderson. He breaks a tackle, and he has enough for a first down into Braves territory to about the 45-yard line. So still a long way to go in this game. Anything can happen, but the Braves probably feel pretty comfortable where they are right now. It's 41-7 to with 93 seconds left in the third quarter. Kinnick's just going to continue to fire. There's not really too much West Virginia State can do if they run the ball. Just time will run out on them. Three receivers left, one to the right. Shotgun snap goes to Kinnick. He gives it off right side for Etheridge. Etheridge trying to stretch it out. He's pushed out about the 42. Strung out well there by Khalil Hollis, as well as Tajay Lyles. Call it a gain of four. Second and six for the Yellow Jackets. A minute 14 in the third quarter remains. 41 points for the Braves, seven points for West Virginia State. Remember, this game was tied 7-7, so do the math. Braves have scored 34 unanswered. Snap to Kinnick against a blitz, throws over the middle, caught, short of the first down marker, pushed back near the line of scrimmage. Let's see if they give him about three yards of forward progress there. Quinton Gray making that catch, a junior from Stafford, Virginia, their top receiver in terms of both receptions and yards coming into today's game. Now an injury timeout. It looks like Gray was shaken up on the play it here as the trainers from West Virginia State have a look at him. He doesn't look like he's too seriously injured. He kind of rolled over sitting on his rear end right now, but he's fully uh, sitting up. As a reminder, Braves fans, season tickets for the 2016-17 home basketball season are on sale now, and premium chairback seats for the Peach Belt Conference's most electric environment can be purchased for as little as $70. This season's package includes 14 men's games and 13 women's games and can be purchased by calling 910- 521-6361 or visiting uncpbraves.com slash tickets. UNCP Volleyball in action today, taking on Georgia College. That was a 2 p.m. first serve. Let's see if we can check on the scores for you there. Georgia College took the first set 25-17 and the second set 28-26, but the Braves have rallied back. They're leading 16-12 in the third set. That game's streaming with live video right now on the main UNCP Braves YouTube channel. Third down and four, pistol formation. Kinnick with the play fake. He has time, throws a deep ball, looking over the middle. Barrett can't get to it, incomplete. Running with them was Tyler Three. Led him a little too far with the throw. Now fourth and four for the Yellow Jackets with 27 seconds left in the third quarter. And here comes the punting unit. Boy, I'm not sure... Again, I'm not, a, I'm not a football coach, ladies and gentlemen. Head coach John Anderson is in his fourth season at the helm of this Yellow Jacket program. He was previously the defensive coordinator at University of Sioux Falls. John Pennington is the offensive coordinator. I'm not sure why you don't go for it here. There's 27 seconds left in the third quarter. You're losing by 34 at home. You have fourth down and four from the opponent's 39, and you're punting as Patterson sends a high short punt. Bun will run away from it. It takes a tough bounce, and it will roll down at the one-yard line. It'll be down right at the one. So the Yellow Jackets finally do get a bounce. That thing looked like it was rolling straight into the end zone, and then just took a left turn, almost 90 degrees. And the Braves will start at their own one. UNCP perhaps not happy about that, but just about everything else has gone the Braves' way. A fumble by West Virginia State led to a Braves score. And then, just a couple plays later, a pick six of just eight yards, Yavel Morris, the freshman from Holly Springs, getting into the end zone. It's been a good day for the Braves. Matt Davis has hit a 58-yard field goal. It's a school record and the longest kick in D2 this year, to my knowledge. And with 17 seconds left in the third quarter, Braves up 41-7, but starting at their own one-yard line. 
Motion along the line. There's a flag. And it looks like it'll be a false start against the offense. It's the kind of situation where if you're a lineman and you can get the opposing team to jump early, you've done your job because a penalty against the Braves costs them half a yard. How far can you back the ball up if you're already starting with the ball practically on the goal line? Half the distance when you're starting on your own one is just not a costly penalty. So back them up all of about a foot, and it'll be first and 10 plus for the Braves. Clock never started, so there's 17 seconds left in the third quarter. Remember, to start this game, each team scored on their opening drive. It was 7-7. Since then, the Braves have scored 34 straight points, and they have a 34-point lead. Looks like a QB keeper here, and a good push by the line as O'Brien falls down all the way past the five to about the six yard line. There's a player down near the line of scrimmage for UNCP. Looks like one of the O linemen. As the clock hits zero on the third quarter, a little slow to his feet, but they never called an injury time. It was Jaden Funderburg, but he's back on his feet, and the third quarter is now in the books. Braves in complete control of this one. It's 41 to seven, and the fourth quarter is coming up next. That was a six-yard QB keeper by Patrick O'Brien to end the third quarter. It's second and four for the Braves from their own seven. Shotgun snap to O'Brien, throwing from his own end zone. Throws to the left side, incomplete. It was behind a sliding Terran Huffman. And they'll bring up a third down and four. Braves deep in their own territory to begin the fourth quarter, but they do have a 41-7 lead over the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. The Braves come in at 7-1, and one, ranked number 18 in the country in Division II football. West Virginia State at 1-7. and seven. This is their only non-conference game as they play a full league schedule in the Mountain East Conference. Two receivers left, two to the right for O'Brien in the shotgun. Against a three-man rush, O'Brien steps up, has plenty of time, throws over the middle, caught, first down Braves. It's Quay Threat. It's a big gain for the Braves as Threat makes the catch, but there was a holding penalty on the play. And that's why O'Brien had so much time. So instead of it being first down and well out of the shadow of the Braves' own goal post, the line of scrimmage was the seven. Penalty will go half the distance to take it back to their own four. Third down and seven now. So it's the second penalty on this possession where the Braves started on their own one. As long as those holding penalties are not occurring in the end zone, or in a false start, whatever, it's just not all that costly. Third and eight for the Braves. Two receivers left, two to the right. O'Brien gets the shotgun snap in his own end zone. Steps up into the pocket. Now he's pressured, will run with uh, the ball tucked to his left side. Gets a first down to the 20. There's another flag on the play as the helmet came off there from Daniel Butler. This very well could be hands to the face. Butler will head to the sideline. It will be another hold. Another half the distance penalty that backs up to their own four. Butler needs to be careful. We've seen his temper flare occasionally this season. And uh, the Braves just don't want to see any trouble at this point. No injuries, no disqualifications, no costly penalties, nothing like that. 
They're in control of this game. There's 14 minutes left. Braves up 41 to seven, but now are backed inside their own five. Third and nine from the three. O'Brien stays in the shotgun formation. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets come after him. Three down linemen and a bunch of DBs in this four wide receiver formation. Blitz comes from the far side. Pass complete to Chandler, who spun down short of the 10. And they need to get to the 11. So that brings up fourth down. And the punting unit will come out. Matt Davis to punt for UNCP. He had what I believe to be the play of the day so far in this one, a 58-yard field goal that ended the second quarter. Since then, it's been all Braves. Davis punted four times so far today for an average of about 40 yards. His longest was 51. And kicking field goals, he's 2 of 2 with that 58-yard long. 58 yards, by the way, the new longest in NCAA Division II this year. And here's an outstanding punt from Davis. While he was standing at his own goal line, that bounces just short of the 30. It rolls inside the 15-yard line, the return from Barrett, and he'll be flipped down short of the 25-yard line. That is the definition of flipping field of flipping field position. I can't even believe it. I can't even get my words out straight. My goodness. That punt officially about 80 yards. I, I, I'm waiting to see what, what they actually call that because that was something. The longest punt so far this year from Davis was 71. The line of scrimmage on that play was the Braves 3. The new line of scrimmage will be the West Virginia State 23. So it's officially a 78-yard punt with a 10-yard return by A.J. Barrett. Timeout on the field. We'll take it as well. 13.08 to go in the ballgame. Braves 41, Yellow Jackets 7. Yellow Jacket offense is on the field. Interesting formation. We might be going I formation here. Fullback in front of Kinnick. And they give it to the right side for Brown, who rumbles his way forward for a gain of six. There's 13 minutes left in the game. The Braves lead 41 to seven over the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. Braves looking to sweep both ends of the home and home after UNCP won in Pembroke against the Yellow Jackets a year ago, 45-21. This year, the Braves' defense is really clamped down on the Yellow Jackets' offense. And keeping them from getting anything going. Yellow Jackets give it up the middle again for Brown. Brown pushing forward. I think he has enough for a first down. They needed about three yards there, and they'll give him the good spot. First down, Yellow Jackets. It's been a good day for Brown, but he's really the only one who's had a good day for the Yellow Jackets. Brown now 12 carries, 197 yards on the ground. 12.15 to go in the ball game. Yellow Jackets trailing by 34. First and 10 from their own 35. Snap to Kinnick. Give it off left side. Brown has a hole, cuts forward, has about 7, 8, and make it 10 yards and another first down. Boy, it was contacted there and then just kept going. Nice tackle there by Damian Whitaker just to hold on because Brown right now is just almost impossible to take down. Goes up over 200 yards rushing with that carry. And in terms of just total offense, the Yellow Jackets are at uh, 355. So he's accounted for more than half of their total offense in just rushing yards. Braves have 294 yards through the air compared to 142 for the Yellow Jackets. Play fake. Kinnick steps up into the pocket, fires deep over the middle, has a man tipped up in the air. Interception almost made. Oh, boy. Coverage there by Matt Thomas Quick, who allowed the ball to be juggled by the receiver, and then coming in trying to make the interception from the weak side of the field. Trying to see who that was for the Braves. He's kicking himself. Got his hand on it, just couldn't haul it in. That was Josh Mance. Nice reaction, though. Second and 10 
from their own 46-yard line. Ball on the left hash as the Yellow Jackets drive from right to left under sunny skies in Institute, West Virginia. High snap to Kinnick on the pistol formation. Gives it to the right side. Brown. Brown, again, a nice burst to get past the first defender. He's taken down for a gain of six. Dickerson Stadium here on the campus of West Virginia State. Seats about 5,000. Uh, certainly not a capacity crowd today, but a good crowd on hand to watch this one. And you've got to think that they get better crowds during conference games because so many of these conference schools are all bunched together. You know, in rolling through the capital city of West Virginia in Charleston, which is only about 10, 15 minutes away, uh, we pass the University of Charleston, which is a conference opponent for them, in their football stadium. Third and five, keep it on the ground with Brown. Brown gets a nice push from his O-line. He has another first down. Some more shoving after the play. The ball might have popped out, but I think Brown held on for another first down. And he has been their offense today. Again, not their feature back coming into this game. Jawan Etheridge coming into today's game had more than twice as many carries as Deontay Brown. But you go with the hot hand, and today it's been Deontay Brown. Started the day off with a 65-yard touchdown run. Hasn't had any play that's been quite that explosive, but 16 carries, 226 yards. That's an average of 14 yards a pop. I'd say keep giving him the ball as long as he can stand upright. Play fake. Kinnick is flushed out, throws over the middle. A tough play, caught deep in Braves territory. What a catch in double coverage. Wow. Emerging under two Braves defenders is Quinton Gray, who sum up, somehow came up with that football. First and goal coming up for the Yellow Jackets. So the Braves have certainly pulled some of their starting defensive players. But there's still a handful of starters on the field and a lot of pride in this code black defense. They don't want to give up another score. Under 10 minutes to go. Give it off right side. Etheridge picks his way forward. Gets hit. Cannot shake the tackle of Josh Manns. And he stopped for a gain of about four. Second and goal from the four now for West Virginia State. Nine and a half minutes to play in a 34-point ball game. It's just what the doctor ordered for the Braves today. A convincing performance through three quarters. Really in no danger of losing this one. Two receivers to the left, none to the right. Pistol formation. There's a fullback and a running back in the backfield with Matt Kinnick. They will keep it with the option, and the quarterback, Kinnick, is in. Standing up. Touchdown, West Virginia State. 9.03 to play in the ballgame. It's 41-13 with the extra point pending. West Virginia State went a very long time without scoring a touchdown, or any points for that matter. Their first touchdown came with 9.32 left in the first quarter. There's 9.03 left in the fourth quarter. And this is just their second score of the game. So someone who's good at math, tell me how many minutes that was. Extra point attempt is up and good by Anthony Herrera and we'll go to a break right now it's 41-14 with 9 minutes to go in this one Braves in control looking to hold on for another road win we'll be right back Braves fans, don't miss out on your chance to receive rewards for attending UNCP home athletic events during the 2016-17 season. Visit the App Store on your smartphone and download hashtag Brave Nation, UNCP's new fan engagement app. The app can be found on the Apple Store or on Google Play. Search hashtag Brave Nation. West Virginia State breaks the Braves scoring run of 34 unanswered. That's now a 27-point UNCP lead. 41-14 with nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. On the Braves Broadcast Network, I'm Cameron Songer. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. UNCP needed a win against a 
team that on paper doesn't stack up. And the Braves have uh, they, well, they've delivered today. Short kickoff, or excuse me, the Braves are expecting a short kickoff. The kickoff will bounce at the one-yard line and roll into the end zone. No one was back there for UNCP. Taron Huffman will finally scoop it up and take the knee. So the Braves will take it out to the 25-yard line. Just a gorgeous day for football here as the shadows are beginning to creep across the field. West Virginia State University in Institute, West Virginia, just a bit north and west of Charleston, West Virginia. Barely a cloud in the sky, rolling hills in the background. The leaves starting to change colors on those rolling hills. Got uh, some smokestacks off in the distance. But uh, all in all, just a, it's a different atmosphere than what the Braves are used to. And give them credit, they've adapted very well and really controlled this game almost from the word go. O'Brien is the quarterback, shotgun formation, play fake. O'Brien with time, throws to the left side, complete. And out of bounds is... 81. That's Jalen Nixon who has his first reception of the season. And Nixon, I believe also his first reception as a Brave. I don't think he had a catch a year ago. Nice they're mixing in some new players in that tight end spot. Stedman Rush, a redshirt junior, Ronald Porter, freshman, and Jalen Nixon, the sophomore. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. They keep it on the ground. It's Cliff Jones. He lowers the shoulder. He's met right near the line of scrimmage. Pushes forward. Might have gotten a couple extra yards after contact. And this is going to be close. If anything, it's third and inches for the Braves offense. That's what they'll call it. So third and a very short one for the Braves offense from their own 34-yard line. Eight minutes and ten seconds left in the game. Braves up 41-14 over West Virginia State. Looking to ride it out come home with another victory. It's about a seven hour ride back to Pembroke. Certainly uh, would be a festive ride if the Braves finish the way they're capable of. Blitz shown, O'Brien swings it out to the left side, complete to Allen. Allen breaks a tackle, and he is taken down short of the 40, but it is more than enough for a first down. John Allen makes the play for the Braves, and that'll move the chains. I'm not sure if that was the play call right away, or if that was an audible from quarterback Patrick O'Brien, because it was absolutely the right kind of play to make. P pressure comes from the up the middle. You get it out to the far side. You have B.J. Bunn over there who's, in addition to being a very capable receiver, kick returner, punt returner, holder for field goals, he's also a pretty good blocker upfield. Shane Richardson just calls him a football player. He's just, he's just a competitor. He's just a gamer. And even when Bunn doesn't get the ball, he's still going to make the play to get you that first down. Clock continues to run. 7-10 to go in the game. Snap to O'Brien. Gives it off left side. No, it's a keeper for O'Brien. He tucks it and runs. Jukes past one, gets tripped up, taken down to about the 42-yard line. A very convincing play fake. Cliff Jones did a good job of selling it as well. So O'Brien with a nice little three or four-yard scamper. Needs to be careful of that big hit. He did need to be helped off the field after taking a big hit in the second quarter. But he was able to stay in the game. Might just been the wind knocked out of him. But at this point in the game, a 27-point game, you certainly can't have your starting quarterback get knocked out for any extended period of time. Flip side of that, though, the Braves are off next week. Give goes up the middle this time for Jones. Jones dances forward, has a couple yards, then tries to keep the legs churning. He gets stood up and stopped short of the marker, but it's pretty close. Third and not more than two coming up for the Braves offense. Brian Staten is in the game as a lead blocker for Cliff Jones. Now Staten will come off. So Staten did a good job there. He was one of the one of the ball carriers for the Braves last year. Finished with 23 carries. This year he's been moved to more of a fullback role. Three receivers lined up on the left. They, they did move the chains for a first down on that last play. And Cliff Jones will remain the running back. Play clock down to five. First and ten for the Braves from their own 48. Option keeper O'Brien dancing forward. Stood up at the 50. Spins off a tackle. And he's down into West Virginia State territory. Got about two or three more yards after that initial contact, but again, you worry a little bit anytime the quarterback is keeping it on the option. Mass of bodies as the Braves need to pick themselves up. Might have been a fumble at the bottom of that pile. And they'll stop the clock now. West Virginia State sideline pointing that they have the ball, but none of the players on the field seem to be 
fired up. Usually it's the other way around. Usually it's the the defensive players are the ones who will tell you if there's if there's been a fumble. Now there's been some signals from the West Virginia State players. Still nothing yet from the officials. I'm not sure they can really say whether O'Brien was down or not. I think a West Virginia State player was the one who finally emerged from that scrum with the football, but O'Brien was down. And the fans here voicing their disapproval with that call. 5.20 left in this one. Braves up 41-14. They have advanced it into Yellow Jacket territory. Second and six from the 49-yard line. O'Brien is in the shotgun formation. Miles Grant stands with him. Three receivers on the right, none on the left. O'Brien calls for the snap, gives it up the middle for Grant. Grant picks his way forward. Not a lot there for him, maybe three or four yards. Tell you what, three or four yards at a time for an offense at this stage of the game is getting the job done. Looks like we have some laundry on the field. Flag, we'll wait for the call. It's a dead ball foul on sportsmanlike conduct on West Virginia State. So 15 yards, an automatic first down. Braves aren't going to decline that. Yellow Jackets, the, the frustration setting in, I think, at this point. They just have not had a consistent means of stopping the Braves here in the second half. As the Braves racked up 17 points in that third quarter. At times, the Yellow Jackets really had the Braves' number with that defense. And there's a long stretch between the end of the first quarter, the beginning of the second quarter, where UNTP's offense didn't get going, but they're going once again. With four and a half minutes left, they're just trying to kill as much clock as possible. Snap to O'Brien. He drops back to throw. Screen play set up. They have Grant on the right side. Grant has blockers out in front. He's inside the 15, taken down about the 13-yard line. Those blockers were just looking for somebody to hit. There was really no defender in the area. Just the secondary, those safeties had to come over and finally make the stop. Gain of about 17 yards on the screen pass to Miles Grant. The Braves are into the red zone again. Four minutes to play. Braves with a 27-point lead. And just getting the personnel they want in the game. Officially a gain of 18 on the pass from O'Brien to Miles Grant. Check in on the day Patrick O'Brien has had. 24 of 35, 323 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. This throw to the left side caught by Allen, but taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Good coverage there. And the tackle made by Kyle Alexander, the freshman corner from Chester, Virginia. Here's the thing for O'Brien, too. The quarterback rating is at 165, and he's completed 69% of his throws. Just a very solid day for O'Brien all around. He's also net 29 yards on the ground on six carries. And he hasn't been sacked. He's just done what he's needed to do today, and the numbers will follow. Second and 14 for the Braves. Give it up the middle for the fullback. This is Dylan Davis. He got might have gotten back to the original line of scrimmage, but there was just not a lot of room for him to work there. Under three minutes to go now. Braves' clock management has been terrific. This is turning into a very long drive. Third and 14 again. And as one of the Braves' O linemen is down, we'll stop the clock and let him receive some attention. Current drive, 10 plays, 59 yards, and it started with nine minutes left in the game. So already more than six minutes off the clock on this drive. You just look at how the Braves have controlled the game in this one. Time of possession, 26 to 24. It's a little misleading because total offense, UNCP with the edge, 409 to 402. But they've done it in eight fewer plays offensively. Another thing is, is the punt yardage. Matt Davis has had just some sensational punts. You add that to the fact that the Braves have been able to essentially shorten the field with long field goals by Matt Davis, including that school record 58-yarder. The Braves have been the better team today. I don't know that they've been 27 points better. A couple very costly turnovers for the Yellow Jackets means the Braves 
uh, they had a they had a zero yard scoring drive. Okay, there was a, a fumble and the Braves couldn't move the ball forward and just took a field goal and they also had an eight yard pick six. Braves have one field position. O'Brien gets hit as he throws, swings it out to the left side, complete on third and long. A lot of room has to go for Miles Grant, who almost gets it. Excuse me, that's Josh Sheridan who made the catch. And he gets very close to the first down marker. If this was uh, not the score it was, I think there'd be a decision to make. And it looks like the offense is actually staying on the field. Fourth and about five coming up for the Braves with two minutes left. Ball at the nine-yard line, it looks like. I'm not sure why they're not just kicking the field goal. Patrick O'Brien looking to the sideline, making sure he has the call right, and says, are you sure? Why don't we just kick a field goal here? I think they're trying to just give Matt Davis a break because he's had a very busy day. They'll let the, the play clock go all the way down to zero, and I think they'll talk about this. Play clock goes to zero. The Braves take a timeout. A minute and 39 seconds left in the game. We'll keep it here. What's been a very impressive drive for the Braves. Seven and a half minutes off the clock on this drive. And uh, already it was looking unlikely the Yellow Jackets were going to mount a comeback, but if you keep the other team from having the ball, you keep them from making a comeback. That's a that's advanced football strategy for you right there, ladies and gentlemen. Braves have the ball. It's going to be fourth and five from the Yellow Jacket eight-yard line. There's really no reason to go for it here. You can pick up a first down without scoring a touchdown, but you'd have to get it inside the three. And then, and then you know, what's the game plan from there? You try to take a knee and just run out the rest of the clock. A at a certain point, you say, this has been a good enough drive. Let's get some points and uh, give our defense one last opportunity to to play a little defense, give the Yellow Jackets another chance to, to run some offense. It will be a field goal attempt for the Braves, but it's not going to be Matt Davis. Number nine, Nate Williams, the freshman from Kannapolis, will attempt his first career field goal. This will be a 24-yard field goal attempt. From the right hash, Nate Williams to attempt a field goal. This to put the Braves up by 30. Bun to hold. The Williams field goal attempt is up and is good. A minute 36 to go. First career points for Nate Williams, and the Braves go up 30. It's 44 to 14 with 96 seconds left. Take our last break right here, and we'll come back with the conclusion of this one on the Braves Broadcast Network. Matt Davis' day is done. He'll stay on the sidelines for this kickoff. Nate Williams to kick off for the Braves. There is a minute and 36 seconds to play. The Braves up 44 to 14 over the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. This is what the Braves needed. 7 and 1 UNCP Braves against the 1 and 7 West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. A good kick will bounce 8 yards deep in the end zone and bounce out of the back of the end zone. Touchback for Nate Williams' kickoff. And the Yellow Jackets offense will get one last crack to try to add some points. Final score update for you, Braves fans, from UNCP Volleyball. A valiant effort from the Braves against Georgia College in a Peach Belt Conference contest back in Pembroke on Lumbee Guarantee Bank Court. Georgia College took the first set 25-17, and then the second set 28-26, and the third set also 28-26. So the Braves did a lot to really pressure the Bobcats. Nearly won the second and the third sets, just couldn't get it done and falling in straight sets. They'll be back in action against Shaw on Thursday, November 3rd. That's at 7 p.m. And I'll be back on the call for that one on the regular video streaming channel. Give goes up the middle as there's a new quarterback in the game here for West Virginia State. Number 14, Brett Mabry is the QB for the Yellow Jackets. And that carry went up the middle for 
Number 36, Trey Davis. Minute and 17 left to go. 44-14, Braves lead. Second and eight coming up from the Yellow Jackets from their own 27-yard line. Shotgun formation. P pump fake, now a throw over the middle. Caught and tripped up at the 45-yard line. Boy, there was green grass in front of Tyler Brown if he had been able to shake that tackle. And a nice catch for the freshman from Massage, West Virginia. And now we're in the final minute as the clock runs. West Virginia State, it's been a tough season for them. They'll drop to one and eight. This give goes off right side for Davis. Davis can't get past the initial surge of defenders. So we're pushing and shoving along the line. And this next play will probably be the last one. Gain of three on the run by Trey Davis. UNCP just really controlled this one all the way. There's an injured player down on the field for the Braves. That's just what you don't want to see in the final 30 seconds. Let's see if we can ID this player for you here. Able to get back on his feet. Number 55, Cody Gardner. Braves really have, have rotated through. Uh, just I, would, I would like to think that just about everybody who's traveled with the Braves has gotten a, a chance to, to get in this game. Really showing off that depth a little bit and getting some of the guys who are on that travel roster but don't play a lot of snaps a chance to just get some, some game action, some live game action. 28 seconds left as the Yellow Jackets come back out. Second and seven, ball in their own 48-yard line. Play fake, pressure, the throw over the middle, tipped up in the air by Everett, or excuse me, by Whitaker, and that'll stop the clock again, incomplete. Third and seven coming up for West Virginia State. And now there's a flag on the play, and a penalty against the Braves. Unsportsmanlike conduct. UNCP's number 98, Keenan Evans, freshman from Cary, North Carolina. So that moves the ball all the way up into Braves territory. 15-yard foul puts the ball at the UNCP 37 with 21 seconds left. Braves had done a pretty good job of keeping their cool. They've given up just 60 penalty yards now with that last foul. Give up the middle, spinning off a tackle. Is that Brown? About enough for a first down. Now there's some more pushing and shoving going on upfield. It's Damian Whitaker who took a guy down upfield. And that will not be enough for a first down. Clock is running down to 4-3. Let's see if the Yellow Jackets can run one more play. They do get the snap off. Dropping back to throw. Lobbing one towards the end zone. Incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. Tyler Brown couldn't make the catch on the throw by QB Brett Mabry, but two white shirts in the area took him down in the end zone. It's pass interference. So now the Yellow Jackets will get an untimed down for the final play of the game. Let's just wrap this thing up, ladies and gentlemen. It's just about time to go home. So the Yellow Jackets will get a chance to add one more play with the clock at all zeros. An untimed down in what's right now a 30-point game. So it'll be first and 10 from the 15-yard line going in. Yellow Jackets can try to score and build themselves some momentum going into next, week, next week's game when they take on Concord. Snap, pressure, throw to the left side, intercepted by UNCP. It's been that kind of day, and the ball game is over. Interception made by Yavel Morris, who has his second pick of the day, and this game is over. Final score, UNC Pembroke 44, West Virginia State 14. Terrific performance all around by the Braves, who didn't have a single turnover. They forced a pair of turnovers before that last play. They finished with three turnovers. Two interceptions by Yavel Morris, a fumble recovered by the Braves. And the Braves get to 8-1 and one on the season. 
Great game all around by UNCP. Matt Davis, 58-yard field goal, might have been the single highlight of the day. Matt Davis also becomes the Braves' single-season scoring leader in terms of individual points. And for that kind of day, he is the Braves' player of the game. Matt Davis, 2 of 2 kicking field goals, including the long of 58. Added all the extra points the Braves had. And the Braves cruise past the West Virginia State Yellow Jackets. Let's give you some of the final stats very quickly. Matt Davis talked about his big day. Offensively for UNCP, Quay Threet was the top receiver. Five catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Trey Chandler, four catches, 60 yards, and the other receiving touchdown for UNCP. B.J. Bunn kept out of the end zone, but he did have seven catches for 68 yards. A less than average day for him, but still really good for B.J. Bunn. He did what the Braves needed him to do. Stedman Rush, two catches, 41 yards. Miles Grant, an 18-yard catch. John Allen, three catches, 11 yards. On the ground, Patrick O'Brien, 29 yards. Montonio Stanley, 25 yards. Miles Grant, 23 yards. Meaning as a team, the Braves just picked up 83 yards of rushing compared to 246 by the Yellow Jackets. But through the air, that's where the Braves made the impact. Patrick O'Brien, 26 of 37, 328 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. And the Braves, they'll get to enjoy two weeks between now and their next game. The regular season finale, senior day in Pembroke, a 2 p.m. kickoff against Concord. Hope you'll join us for that one on the UNCP Braves YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed to that one, go ahead, go ahead, go to YouTube, search UNCP Braves. That's our main video streaming channel. This is the one we use when the teams go on the road and we don't have enough video equipment to, uh, to bring you a video stream, but they still let me come out and talk into your ear for a couple hours. So glad you joined us today for UNCP Braves football. Your final score, one more time, Braves 44, Yellow Jackets 14. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Cameron Songer. Braves win. Enjoy the rest of your day.